to a class of 244. Say it again. So you was in class uh, 244. No, 246. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know okay. Sean Anderson from 244, and I know uh, John Barber from 244. They were two years older than me. Yep. Yeah, I was from 245. Yeah, you were right uh, in the middle. Yeah. yeah, I was with um, the Majors class. Yeah. Yeah, you played with Mike Rowe. Did you play football at Central? No, I didn't play football. I'm no guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I know my but, class is about football. We all play football, so yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I Bill, played. Bill and all them cats. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So small world, man. I'm I'm working with uh Sean Dakota Anderson that came out. Uh, he was one of the most popular guys in Central at the time, if you remember that's right. Sean Anderson. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So he's an actor now. I'm working with him. He was in The Wire, and uh, he's still big, man. And uh, you know, so I I got a Kensington script that I want to shoot in you know North Philadelphia about that open drug market they got there. So we trying to raise funds for that. I got Jill Scott on tap. You know, but if we can get the capital, once I get capital, man, I'm just going to put the paper down and do the projects because I can write all day. I got content all day. It's about getting the paper to make it happen. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Anything I can do, man, let me know. We got to put each other contact. If you got some rich uncles, man, call them up and say invest a mill in Omar Tyree. That's what you can no, do. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, uh, so Rob, you can uh, 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 proceed. With the conversation as, as people are, are are joining on about the whole black house experience, right? All right. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's move. Um, you know, basically get Omar's perspective on his black college experience. You know, like I said, this 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 is his time. Right. Right. Well, I transferred to Howard University. I went to Pitt first because, like I said earlier, I wanted to play football. And right. we didn't look at HBCUs as being football schools that graduated guys that went pro. You know, in fact, I watched this year the first time they had an HBCU combine and an HBCU senior game down there in Louisiana. And I watched both of those things this year. You know, this but, is 2022. You know, so. I noticed HBCU was just really um, had the most impression on football season year, period. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're going to see how many of them get drafted to the NFL now. But, That's you know, the, the, to come back to that story, I wanted to play football. And back in 1987, we weren't looking at HBCUs as football schools. Of course, everybody knew that Doug Williams came out of Grambling, and that was a tremendous story. Yeah. And, of course, there's other guys from HBCUs who have made it as professional athletes, yeah. including Mel Blunt. You know, I got met Mel Blunt. You know what I mean? So them old school dudes, of course, they were coming out of black schools back in the day, uh, but not the numbers, tremendous numbers. Yeah, so we still yeah. looked at going to predominantly white schools. They call them PWIs now, right? Right. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah, that's the new word they use. It. These kids come up with initials for everything, man, in this, oh, this man. new world. Yeah. So, oh, they so know, they know how to formulate a full sentence. <laughs> yeah. So I went to. And, 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 and so, so like, um, a, a good question. Like, so what's the people expect? ironically in that of Jersey? And, and it's, of course, you coming out of Philadelphia, Pitt and Penn State are the big football schools. As no way in the world I was staying at, at in Central, uh, I mean, uh, Philadelphia to go to Temple. You know, the Temple was not a football school <laughs> at all. And right, so, once, right. uh, once I went to Pitt in 87, you do your research, that was the year the NFL had a strike. Oh, and when yeah. they had a strike, we had dudes from Pittsburgh that left school to play for these SCAG teams that they had. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember that. I remember that. And, and we had a coach at Pittsburgh. His name was Mike Godfrey. And he became one of the most vocal advocates against guys leaving college to play sports. And I was like, what are you doing, dude? Like, we all want to play pro, man. Like, that's the only reason, we, you know. Yeah. And so I got a bad taste in my mouth about the whole scholarship athlete thing because they use you, but absolutely. they don't allow you to use them. You know what I mean? So Absolutely, absolutely. There were so many things that happened in 87 that made me militant and pissed off. And then on campus at Pittsburgh, they had a million parties for white folks, a million different events and stuff. 
and we just felt like second class. You know what I mean? We were yeah, sitting around yeah, there yeah, talking about being a pit, <laughs> talk about being division one and all that. And we sitting in the lobby where the white boys had 20 parties to go to, and we sitting in the damn lobby. And so, uh-huh. you know, we used to talk about black schools, and man, black schools, they probably doing this and doing that. And then this whole party school thing came into play. Oh, they just party schools. And after a while, I said, you know what, man? I'm tired of hearing this nonsense, dude. Yeah. I'm going to a black school. And I was reading Jet and Ebony and all these different magazines where black schools were graduating our leaders year after year yeah. after year. These yeah. people coming out of black colleges. So I said, I, look, man, I don't know what we're talking about, but the leadership is still coming from black schools. And okay. so I said, look, I want to be part of a black school. Howard University was, was listed as the top dog. And I always want to be part of that top dog coming out of Central. I'm always thinking about being number one. Uh, uh, and okay. then, uh, okay, I said, and then, so, so. and then Howard was also in D.C. Chocolate City. So yeah. I was like, "Yo, dude, I'm I'm getting out of here, going to Chocolate City, Howard <laughs> University." So I transferred after my junior, uh, uh, sophomore year, and I became a junior and senior at Howard. So I have both experiences, but I got wow. the HBCU graduate degree or degree from Howard University in the School of Communications. So instead of me talking to talk, I walked the walk and left the white school to return home to my people in, in Chocolate City, D.C. Okay. Absolutely. I, okay. So, 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 Rob, so, 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 um, Omar is remiss. So, Omar comes from University of P- Pittsburgh, come to repertory. And that's where August Wilson comes from, uh, uh, Rob Penny yeah. comes from. Yeah, he was so, real famous. He was right, real right, famous right. out in Pittsburgh. Yeah, they all okay. talked about it. Go. All right, all right, and 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 then so 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 this is the deal. So Rob is from Cheney University. Uh, he's also uh, in Atlanta, um, and then um, uh, Doug's Rucker. If you can, um, uh, can, can you uh, can you bring Doug's Rucker on? So so uh, Douglas, um, he went to school at Morris Brown. And he is from um, Philadelphia. So, um, Douglas, now you have your chance to ask Omar what you want to ask him about <laughs> how he can support you. Go ahead, Douglas. Uh, so, so, Douglas, also tell your organization. Rob, Rob, Rob give him the rules. Okay. How you doing, Omar, brother Hello. Robert? Hello, I met brother. you a, a few times, Mr. Omar. I met you at Howard University. I also met you here in Philly at, at a book reading. Uh, but the question I always would ask you was that very first book that you wrote. I just could never, I could never remember. It. What was that very first book that you wrote? It was called Colored on White Campus, The Education of a Racial World. And it was, was all it. about all the anger I came up across when I was at Pittsburgh. But it wasn't just for me. It was for all the students at predominantly white universities that were going through it, man, because yeah. it got to the point where I wanted to fight people <laughs> at school, yeah. man. I couldn't. So I was too reactive. I'm a very reactive, passionate person. Yeah. And I was too reactive on the white. I had to leave, man, to focus again because I was an academic. But the reaction was making me, it was taken away from my academics. And so then my grades started, you know, slacking. And so I said, yeah, I can't have this, man. I'm here to get my education. I need to be able to focus. And so I had to leave Pitt. But yeah, yeah. definitely, man, I was very reactive student. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I always wanted, I couldn't remember it. I couldn't remember yeah, it. Yeah, um, call it on white campus. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's now it's now called College Boy. You can now get it. We changed the title to College Boy, and it's in my Urban Griot series. Griot spelled G-R-I-O-T, storyteller. A lot of young people don't know that, but, you know, right. from the old guard. So uh-huh. you know, the Urban Griot was the name I used for my masculine book because females took over when they got that Fly Girl book. That was it. Oh, I was that like, was it. And that's I the one I also remember, Fly Girl. Yeah. That's the one I do remember. That's the popular one. Yeah. 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 But that was it. Colored on White Campus is yeah. now called College Boy. Go ahead. I got you. I got you. Well, anyway, my name is Douglas Rucker. I am. Uh, I'm here in Philly. I'm uh, uh, founder and executive director of the Chew and Shelton Community Development Corporation. I live in a section of Philly, um, East Germantown, and it's kind of rough over here. But um, that's 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 where it is. That's how it is. But um, I also just finished doing a play. Uh, we received a grant. Uh, to do an anti-gun violence play called Hip the Yo Put the Gun Down a Hip Hop Symphony. Um, it was a very successful run, two shows, and I was able to get um, young adults and adults to help me out with this project. A lot of it, I had to ask them to collaborate with me because it, it's really 
not the life that I knew, uh, especially with how gun violence is today um, and how it's going about. Uh, I didn't know it was so technical. You know, a lot of this stuff was happening off of uh, Instagram. And I had interviewed some young people to ask them, was this true? And they said, yes, it is. And I couldn't believe it. So we incorporated that as a storyline in this play. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a very good community production because the grant called for me that I had to use community people, uh, uh, you know, community audience for it or, or, or performers. Right. Now I would like to take it on another level, which I feel more comfortable with. So I'm putting all that together now. Um, uh, one of the uh, uh, the black organization called Men Who Care of Germantown received an ex, uh, expansion grant. Again, this is all about nonviolence. And so they uh, wanted to uh, fund me to do it on a different level in a different place. So I'm kind of, I'm very content about it. And I'm happy about it because I'm dealing with a subject as I'm sitting right here that summer that I was working on the script and Dr. Henderson had came up here to visit me. Um, like two young guys were killed. I can look out my window. Two young right. guys that I knew um, got killed right in, at, at this, while I'm working, actually working on the play. So right. I've been to uh, another funeral of two other guys. But anyway, I do want to say this um, that um, I attended Mars Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, unfortunately, when my my greatest regrets, one of my greatest regrets in life is that I dropped out. And, um, but the experience of the time that I was there for those two semesters was one that I will never take lightly. It uh, enhanced me uh, as a man and, and, and my blackness. I remember there was, a, there were, these books were like the Bible uh, in the eighties uh, for us. It was called Black Voices. And, uh -huh. Yeah, and um, we were really uh, a lot of reading of uh, Fernand Fonan uh, towards uh, a black revolution and wretched of the earth. Uh, and so it was a wonderful experience. I got a chance to, um, I'm, I'm from Georgia, I'm from Griffin, Georgia, but I have okay. family in Atlanta, so I'm, I'm definitely from the South. I, I, um, I was raised up here, but I still, I'm country boy, I'll say that in a heartbeat. <laughs> but um, one of the things that, um, from that short time uh, uh, at college. And, and in fact, I'm 60 years old and I have, have returned to college. Uh, this community development work is very demanding, but I've been offered some uh, opportunities to, to return. And so I'm excited about that. It's never too late. And I think that learned that from uh, being at Morris Brown College, it was a smaller college. But what I enjoyed about it is that you could take classes all, all over the campus. You could go to Morehouse. You could uh, even take classes at Spelman and Clark. Um, but your home school was your, your home campus, basically. Uh, it was a wonderful yeah. Uh, yeah, meeting our, our Black people. And at that time in my life, you know, uh, we, had the, uh, we had a lot going on uh, towards the, the Rodney King riot that happened. I was present when that happened. And to just to be having to engage with the with the actual uh, civil rights leaders, um, uh, John Lewis, who I admire and had an opportunity to spend with them, and I can go on and on to name some of the men that God had blessed me to encounter. And something you said, how the great black leadership came from those small black colleges, where you had yeah. a lot coming out of Atlanta, and um, that was a, a wonderful experience. Um, one that I, I would always embrace, but again, and in closing, my re regret then was that I did drop out of college. I was a playwright, and I felt as though the craziest thing in the world is to think that a writer had to go and learn how to be a writer. I thought that you had to experience what you were writing about. And um, well, well, you got both things. You got both things. Um, yeah. You can experience what you're writing about, but you still need the technical skills I to mean, be able to execute it. And so exactly. I was ready to drop out of school, too. And my grandmother called me from West Philly 
And she said, you go ahead and do what you want to do, son. I just want you to know that your mother is praying and she's having headaches. So you go ahead and do what you need to do. <laughs> and yeah. my mother, she was not a religious woman, so to, to hear that she's praying. I know and what she, she was said. not an unhealthy woman, so to hear that she's having headaches, you know, all because of me, think about <laughs> who is cool because... I wanted to be basically an entrepreneur. And I got to the point where I was like, look, man, this school don't raise entrepreneurs. It, it raised people that go get jobs. And so I was ready to stop it. But then once my grandmother hit me with that, you know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, it's sarcasm. She hit me with you know <laughs> I mean? reverse psychology. You know what I mean? Talking about my mom. I said, all right, I'm going to finish school for my mom. And so when I finished at Howard, I gave my mother my degree and I've never had it in my house. I've always given it to Ooh. my mother. But in those extra, I think it was one year left that I had to do. And that extra year, I still had certain skills that I had to carry out. I graduated with honors, cum laude from Howard. And I learned certain skills that I still use today where right, nobody, right. nobody can tell me that I don't know what I'm doing when I put this stuff together. And right. so, yeah, it is learning. I learned a lot, but I'm a yeah. scholar uh, anyway. I'm going to pick up stuff in. I'm a sponge. That's what I do. But right. at the same time, even after being a sponge, having the technical skills to now yeah. turn that material into a play, a story, a poem, a novel, a screenplay, a stage right, play, right. having the skills to do that, hey, man, is you, you can okay. learn it, but being in school to get it, I, I, I honor that. And, I'm and, and, one, and, I, and one of the last thing I'll say, this is what really, uh, really, really hurt me uh, and later in life. Um, I was working in theater and I knew I knew what I was doing. because I did a lot of workshops. I did a lot of training at Freedom Theater uh, and John Allen and uh, even Kenny Leon, at, when he was an artistic director at the Lions Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if y'all know that, but that was a long time ago. I remember when Kenny was first uh, elected to serve as artistic director there. But um, what happened to me, I had all this knowledge and everything about theater and it was this backstage work or more production. And they wanted to hire me, but they couldn't because I didn't have a degree. And again, what you said is your mama called you and told you to go finish. My grandmother. Your grandmother. grandmother. Your grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and my she grandmama. told me about my mom. She said, right. your mother's having yeah. headaches and praying. And my mother was a, she was a beast. She no headaches, no praying. So when my grandmother told me that, that meant that she was stressed out. My mother was. Right. And my grandmother, right. she she did it with such such poise and coolness. Mm -hmm. Oh, you go ahead and do what you want to do, grandson. <laughs> this is your life. You know, right. your mother's just having headaches and praying. But you go do what you want to do. Don't worry you about it. Be, that's that, that's that reverse, <laughs> reverse psychology from a yeah. smart grandmother. And I, oh, I was yeah. like, all right, I'm just going to finish school because I was the oldest boy. And, and they were all talking about setting the example for all the And in fact, I'm the oldest grandson. So I'm the dude that had to set the example. So I didn't have a choice. I had to finish for right. everybody else in West Philadelphia. And right. they were all looking at me. And sure enough, my younger brother ended up going to Howard after going to my graduation. <laughs> so it was real. It yeah. was real. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold, on. So hold, on. Okay. hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. So I want you all to understand this. So um, Douglas. Yes. Omar has an urban literacy project. He is 511C3 national. You can have the conversation with him afterwards. Uh, uh, do, do you understand? Yes. Uh, and, and then, so so now, uh, what's on the docket is next weekend, we're gonna be in um, uh, uh, Columbia, Columbia, Maryland. And then on the uh, 29th, uh, we're gonna be in Philly. In May, uh, 29th of uh, May. Uh, yeah, May. May 29th, we're gonna be in Philly. Right. So if you want to have a conversation with um, uh, Omar about how you can use a, a performance piece to be a fundraiser, that is uh, permissible. Um, but then, you know, so what I'm saying to you all, um, don't be afraid to uh, ask Omar questions. He'll let you, he'll tell you, hell no, <laughs> uh, right, in right. a moment. But so, so what I'm saying that, so now when they, they all come online, it's important that we handle Omar five city tour and Omar, what's your five city tour? A five city tour? Yeah. Uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, 
I would do short, not Atlanta. No, Atlanta superstar. You wouldn't don't mess with Atlanta right now. <laughs> no, Charlotte, Charleston, DC, Baltimore, and Philly. That's five cities. Um. All right. Yeah, um, that's the cities. That's the cities I can get to that that you know. I'm in Charlotte now. I got an event set up for May third in Charlotte, and I'm trying to set up DC and Baltimore. I'm gonna be skipping through there next week. Okay, looking okay. at the wait, venues wait, and set them up. Wait, that's okay. the five okay. cities to start okay. with. And we can uh, go right. over to Camden. Camden uh, is right uh, next to us. Go all ahead. All right. So how does one uh look at your schedule? Because I don't know know anything about May third. Because I know that. So let me make this personal. I know that I'll be. I'm coming to. Uh, uh, Columbia on the 17th. I'll be in Philly on May 29th. I'll be in New York on May the 5th. I'm trying to look. I don't know what the third is. So how right. can people uh, be able to detail uh, working, looking at at your schedule? So 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 it's an interesting. Thing. So uh, Omar, he gonna show you all like coupons and everything. How it is that uh, anybody that attends or perform at at his event can be a, a benefit for the organization. Is that so? Right. Yeah, so a sponsor, uh, an event, promoter, partner, we got a whole lot of opportunities. But yeah, you just brought up something. I got to put that on my website, the schedule, where I used to do tour schedules. I haven't done a tour recently, so you bringing up the five-city tour, yeah, I got to go ahead and put that on my Hot Lava website now. And then they, they can see everywhere I'm going to be and where I'm you, going to you, be. You yeah. said you're going to be in New York. What date is that? Uh, no, well, that's, no, that's that's uh, Maurice going to be oh, in New Maurice. York. Oh, Maurice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, said, he said Maurice. He said uh, May the 5th. Yeah. Okay. So I will be. Uh, but your event here is May in Philadelphia is May 29th. Yeah, May 20th. That's a Sunday. Yeah, I'll okay, be cool. mostly Sundays. Yeah. I got you, May. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, uh, right. And and then so uh, I need uh, Rob, you and the Rotunda can handle this so that everybody that logs on will automatically can be able to go to uh, Omar's uh, uh, contact. To So I'm being very clear. I know how to do this. So I'm trying to make sure that everybody that logs on can go into Omar's uh, contact to figure out what the tour schedule will uh, look like. So, um, so, uh, so those. You know, don't be remiss to ask uh, Omar when he comes to Philadelphia. Can he do a PSA for your organization? Don't be remiss to ask him that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, also, Omar, we do have the uh, Yo Put the Gun Down Hip Hop Symphony. Uh, it's a project. Uh, so uh, I, I, I use that uh, banner. We're right now we're in search for a, a, a young uh, uh, artistic director for that piece because I really don't have time for the theater elements of it and also it's more to it is a it is an anti-gun campaign and outreach and awareness mentorship program and things like of, of that nature so so you, you say you're looking for what now what kind I of artist? in philly yeah we, we we're in search for our, our artistic director to to run that particular project oh, okay and our, a director my, you said a yeah, director yeah artistic director to okay to, to facilitate okay okay okay, yes. okay. Okay, hold on. So, um, people who, who, who so most likely uh, everybody that's coming on who's talking will come from uh, our tour. So all you gotta ask is ask them to send you uh, their uh, resume, and then yeah. uh, they will do so. So, so um, we gotta we gotta handle ourselves uh, accordingly. So and then uh, and then also so what the major thing is. So uh, Omar, talk about Kensington. Yeah, Kensington, uh, I saw that neighborhood, man. It must have been about seven years ago. I'm driving through there. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm driving through there, and all of a sudden, I start seeing white folks, black folks, Puerto Ricans just walking around looking like zombies. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I stopped. And I, and I said, it, this must be, because it looked like drugs. You know, I'm an older dude, so I remember the 80s when you would drive through North Philly and jokers would run up to your car. I got that That's white right. lady. I got that That's white right. snow. I That's got that. Right. And I'm like, man, I'm not you running to. So I understood what it was as soon as I saw it in Kensington. But I was like, man, it's every race, every nation, I mean, every age group. And they just walking around in clear view. Like, like it's not hot or anything. And I'm like, wow, like the whole neighborhood. So I was like, this is crazy. And I was doing a video in Philadelphia last year. I got a young brother named MC Knowledge. And we was doing a song called Philly Style that you can get on SoundCloud and all the different apps. And we were shooting a video. 
and we happened to skip through Kensington again. And when I looked at it again, man, with zombies walking around, fiending for drugs, all out in the open, all over the place, I said, man, this is a movie right here, man. I got to, and I'm a writer. So that was it, dude. I started doing research on it. I put the characters together, put Jill Scott in the middle because she's a poet and she's from North Philly and they mm -hmm. haven't been casting her in that way. That She got that, that ire to her. And so I put her in it and then I put a uh, brother, uh, Sean Dakota Anderson in it, you know, as a guy trying to, you know, reform these folks. And then I had a whole lot of ensemble cast folks and you got Puerto Ricans down there and Dominicans too because they in that neighborhood. And so oh, I yeah. turned it into a great ensemble cast story with natural natural scenery because all you got to do is take the cameras down there brother right. and, speak. and so people don't understand that the daggone Kensington is a character itself but you bring the, it's crazy so I said man this is the easiest movie in the world so I wrote my characters in we can shoot that movie in two weeks and have it international legendary status man but that's the kind of stuff where I need capital to do stuff like that Everybody would benefit from that. Now, of course, the city officials may be a little upset because, of course, there's a lot of talk about Philadelphia allowing Kensington to run like that. Because even in the screenplay, I got people saying they wouldn't let this happen in South Philly. They wouldn't let this happen in, you know, in, in Northeast. They wouldn't let this happen downtown. They wouldn't let it happen in West Philly, Mount Airy, a whole lot of places. But in Kensington, whatever deal was made, and then the police say, man, I can't arrest a hundred people, a million people. It's all people around here. And so I wrote that piece, man. It's going to have a great soundtrack, too. I got a lot of great emotional music that fits that whole drug, uh, I guess I would call it hopelessness. Funky, soulful, hopeless music, man. That's that daggone Curtis Mayfield stuff. And so I'm ready, dude. I'm older. I'm seasoned. I'm polished. I'm ready to do it. We got to find the capital. I'm hunting hard for it. That's what Maurice and I, we've been talking for the last couple of years. I got to find out how to get this capital because once I get it, man, I'm going to do what a whole lot of the money brothers should have been doing a long time ago while they buying cars and houses and all that other stuff that they blowing the money on. I want to do community film that really talk to us. And Kensington, man, all you got to do is walk through that joker and you know, wow, this is something else. And I want to show it. Okay. You know, and, and the ironic thing is um, during the week of May 8th, 14th is the National Prevention Week. You know, so that's when the city is getting together, you know, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration wow. along with organizations. They're going to be highlighting just that the the the, uh, the impact drugs and alcohol have on a city, and 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 I'll be one of the keynote speakers. And one of my charges is okay, call to action. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, you know, where's the money at? You yeah. talk a good game. We we know we understand that. You know, the ideas are wonderful. We got the people behind us, but we need money. Capital capital moves things. Right, things happen. So and and and, and, and then so so, so we I, if we can talk to them. You know, we could do a, a give back from the capital we make from the film. You know what I mean? Like, okay, Absolutely. we say 25% of the proceeds, but now the whole world knows. And then we can start getting capital coming from the whole world to fix that area. But okay. yeah, I got to do the film. Okay. I, that's uh, what I'm a writer for. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, Omar, so yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to call uh, 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 Rob on the spot. So, Rob, when you were on the Elton John tour, why you didn't ask Elton John for money? <laughs> So so, 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 you see the background. Robert, Robert was featured on the Elton John tour. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh, Robert, I'm just, excuse me, when is this National Prevention Week in Philadelphia going to take place again? Uh, from May the 8th to the 14th. And their location? Um, well, well, they're going to have various locations. Uh, doo -doo 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 but I, I can. Uh, Put your information in the uh, contact. In okay, the, yeah, uh, I need to do that anyway. I can yeah. send you the information because I think they're going to have various uh, events throughout the city. Okay, uh, all right. Let me get it now. The fourteenth that that whole week. Okay. All so right. I haven't, I haven't had the um. I don't have the the full schedule of where you know everything is going to be as of yet. Uh, because actually I've just uh committed committed to speaking to it um last week. So they'll be sending me the information um, okay, okay, in the next okay. couple of days. Okay. Uh, so uh, Omar, um, before you go, I want you to, uh, so, so one of the things I want everybody to do is, is that um, please lift 
list all of his, his information on your website. Um, and next time that you appear, you can wear a T-shirt. You can uh, promote the uh, uh, event. Um, right. So, so once once you find out where, where Omar is going to be, once he's going to be in the city, we can move forward uh, on the. Um, yeah, yeah, I got uh, I got three brands that I'm I'm pulling together, guys. Uh, you know, True Soul and Hip Hop is one brand. Then I have the Flow, you know, for poetry, hip hop, and soul people that can just flow. And then the last one, which is the most important, I'm getting getting the design done right now. Keep it clean. Right now, hip hop and music has gotten so filthy with these yes, kids, yeah. man, that don't understand that when you put music in public space, sometimes the people not there to hear your music, so they don't want to hear that. But if you say something great that's not profanity, you know, laced, and they like it, they can become your fans. And so I keep telling these kids, when I was at West Philadelphia Playground on 36 and Aspen, and the DJs came to the playground, they knew they couldn't play filth-related music. So hip-hop started with just rocking the beat. Even uh -huh. when you had hardcore dudes, they knew they couldn't curse, because you're going to set up them speakers at the playground at the park Absolutely. in somebody's Absolutely. house so you knew you could and you could be the hardest brother in the world but you knew i can't cuss in this space because we got grandparents and kids out here that don't want to hear that and so we understood how to be professional in that public space and so i want to bring that back keep it clean if you telling me you can't be a great mc without keeping it clean then i gotta challenge your skills you know what i mean because cuss words, <laughs> cuss do words don't, it don't make a hot song of course it puts uh, emphasis on certain things but dude if you can't create emphasis with the tone of your voice with the power of your voice Chuck D it, yes here it yes. is here, Chuck <laughs> D would, he had the power in his voice where you understood it he's serious without cursing you know so I want to bring that back man keep it clean that's the three different brands that I'm going to have all under my hot lava entertainment true soul and hip hop that means it's true it speaks to the people. It's supposed to uplift the people and talk about what's going on. We got young people that don't want to talk about nothing that's going on. I don't want to deal with that. That ain't going to make me money. That's chump stuff, man. A real artist is always going to deal with issues that his community is facing. Okay? And then the flow, a lot of these kids are punching in now. They can't even flow for two minutes, man. They <laughs> punch in every ten. I've been in the studio with them. They punch in every couple lines. I said, dude, how you going to even perform if you you gotta keep plugging in the music, right? And you can't even perform a, a one verse that's just going through the verse. And so I wanna Man. see guys that can flow. And then of course to keep it clean. And so we gonna keep all three of them going and I'm gonna build this thing up, man. So knock on wood, let me live, God. And we gonna build this up over the next few years. And then I'm gonna be able to finance every film I want through utilizing music and performance. Because we starting with small venues, but initially, or eventually rather, we want to do the concerts. We want to do the Met. We want to do all them big, the Fillmore. You know what I mean? We want to do the Children's right. Theater. We want to do the African-American Theater. We want to do all them theaters with big shows of poetry, hip-hop, and soul that keeps it clean and speaks to the people, brother. Because that's what Philadelphia used to do with Gambling Huff all through the 70s. And I want to bring that back. Okay, all right. And, and and then so 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 Rob, tell him your connection with Larry Lamb. Well, for one, that's that's my best friend. <laughs> um, you know, we best friends for over 30 plus years. Um good deal. You know, because I used to be with him. Stop, you know, stop, and, and stop. So uh connect him, uh connect him, connect Omar with Larry Lamb. I mean that's 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 nothing, man. That's is, that, nothing. is that Larry? Let 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 Larry. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let let Larry. And and then also, uh, I'm I'm make a connection with uh, major figures. Do you know who they are, Omar? Yeah, man. That, you know, of course, definitely. <laughs> no question about it. And, no, no. So, so so is that is that part of PSK? Fox I Killer? No, what PSK? Yeah, Parkside Killers. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yep, that's Schoolie D. I've been trying uh -huh. to meet him for the longest, man. I ain't met him yet. I, that's yeah, Schoolie D. Okay. He's my favorite. He's my favorite Philadelphian rapper, man. He was the first one that came out. We was at Central when he dropped them songs, man. We were like, yo, Absolutely. Philly dude. Because for the most part, we were DJing. New York was making the music. We were DJing. And yep. he was like one of the first ones to come out. With one. Of course, we were doing soul music. We definitely were doing that. Yeah. But with the hip hop, 
Philly has some of the baddest DJs on the planet, brother. And New York know it. New York, like, yo, them DJs down. In fact, yep. I think the Spectrum was the first big arena that had hip-hop concerts because I don't think Madison Square Garden was doing them yet. They were coming no. down to Philly to yeah. the Spectrum. That was the right. first hip-hop arena for big concerts. And, for, and I tell everybody that. Philadelphia was the first hip-hop tour city because when they were making music in New York, that wasn't a tour. You had to go somewhere else, and Philadelphia was the first city they went to that was ready to rock and roll with them. Yep. Okay, and, and, okay, and and then so so this is but this is Maurice. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, but yeah, oh, I I go get. Matter of fact, he just did an event uh, with Schoolie D, and he's great. Do another event with Schoolie D, um, in, in, in North Philly at Lewin, the new Lewin Shoes. So I can definitely uh, once I connect you with Lad, you'll be connected with a with with everybody. Good deal, because that's where we coming, man. We're we going to get the new guard with the new young boys. And a lot of them young boys, the Philly sound is, is too much of the same sound. I'm like, yeah, yeah. man, a whole city sound is what y'all doing, man. We got to compete with these other cities. So I got some young boys now with MC Knowledge. Y'all going to see him. I got a boy named The Tag. And I got another boy look like Biggie, Big Love It. He call himself 6'5 now because he's 6'5. But his last name is Love It and he's big. So I'm like, man, just call yourself Big Love It. I like that one. <laughs> you know, so. And then it's the females right now. Uh, Kilana, that's how she pronounced the name. The Muslim sister sending me stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm going to work yeah, with her. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to work with her and every other young artist. I'm looking for some R&B artists out of I got some crazy, crazy R&B stuff that I want to, you know, put on Philadelphia artists. But that's so hard to deal with now because these kids, they get these social media numbers and their heads get so big and they haven't really done anything yet. All you, you know, did was you, know you know, you, you know what happened um, when we were doing the play, which is a funny thing, when they would come for audition and I would ask them, did they have legitimate theater experience and some of them did you know came from the church play experience but I don't count as regard as that at all but the funniest thing is they um the dancers that I had Hello. they did this hip hop thing on the YouTube and all that great stuff Email, I want but when they got down to the actual theater they didn't know they didn't have a clue okay. <laughs> they did not have a come on clue. now oh, okay. I said those videos on, I mean come those on, YouTube, they can be edited I mean I need to see something here. They good. had no clue. They had no clue what good. different theater was, you know, and it's crazy. They yeah. think that they are stars on that and they make a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, but when it comes down to the reality of it, I, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. I think only three people had um, right. theater background. Then I had to understand it was a community production, but I'm thinking that some of them had some type of techniques or something. And the one thing they I noticed that they do not have any discipline whatsoever. Yeah. Upstairs yeah. from me was the was the um the school the school the Philadelphia School of Dance, which were a young African American mostly uh, female a female ensemble, little kids from like five on up. Right. They were the most disciplined children that I ever seen in my life. They came downstairs, they got their snacks, they went up. When they came back, they went home. Their parents picked them up. I had to bring my cast out to look at them, how they behave, to tell right. these grown folks. A lot of what is happening with our artists and, and our children today is that they have no discipline. They have, mm -hmm. they have disrespect the game. I don't care yeah. if it's discipline or what have you. They totally disrespect. When, what, what we did, I'll never forget, right at this alleyway, when our moms, they knew we was drinking uh, wine. They knew we was smoking weed. But when your mama came down the street, you said, yo, here come Miss Tyreek. Yo, take that wine in the alleyway. Yeah. The weed out, all that. If I'm, if I'm, if and, I'm then, and then, right, and then once, and once they left, we went back to it, but we, we didn't right do it in their face. <laughs> uh, so see, some of them, some realize, of them dudes like, that's hypocritical. You, you but we had respect but in we their had face. Every, you yeah. had to have that respect. Yeah. Uh, Miss Tyree, your mama went and told my mom, said that boy's around the corner smoking weed, and that's it. And, yeah. and your mother- They gonna come outside and they gonna meet yeah. you at the corner. They're not gonna <laughs> take your side because cause yeah. she gonna say, oh, my mama told me you was doing such and such, so don't lie. And that's right. how see, it was. And see, that's the difference between these new artists and the old artists Yes. Is we understood and we came out of a sense of community. Yes, and, we did. And, and that we were a representative of the community. We, yeah. we were made, we were, who we, 
the community had to be in order for us to become. Yeah. And when we stepped outside, no matter where we went, we were, we represented. Just like Omar right. said, you, you know, when you were rapping, even though you was in the neighborhood or whatever, you knew, okay, I can still maintain the integrity of my, my hardness and my, my gift right. without being disrespectful. Exactly, and, and all that because they I just wanted to rock the mic. You understood. Exactly. I'm on stage. Everybody's looking at me. I want them to talk about me. So let me rock this mic. Right. And so you turned it into a skillful thing because it's like while I'm on the stage, I want everybody to know I'm the best. And that's what they did. It wasn't about cursing people out. Yeah, and trying yeah. to be. No, it was about I'm gonna rock the mic better than you rock it, better than he rock it. So you had to rock that beat. Now they don't even listen to the beast like that. They get these sour beats. <laughs> Beat over here, stuff it over here. Oh, <laughs> crazy. So I got I got wild. some of the hottest beats you ever heard because I'm into the rhythm patterns. I know the rhythm pattern. These kids listen to it. Oh man, that's old school. I'm like, dude, it's hot. That's what we did. We took old school James Brown, Funkadelic, wherever we got it. It's a man, it's beat hot. And we jumped in it like we doing double dutch and then we ride it. They don't understand how to do that. They only pick beats that they can rock. They don't know how to challenge themselves with beats Absolutely. that are different where they got to earn how to rock it that way. They don't do that. They immediately, if they hear a beat they can't really jump on, no, that ain't my style. Chumps, man. So I want them guys that are beasts that go yeah. at any beat. And that's the kind of guys I really love. When you say flow, if I put on any beat, catch the rhythm of that beat and flow to that beat. And that's what you and that's what you was uh, when you were talking to the brother um, um, Douglas about earlier. All right, about, Rob, Rob, know, Rob, Rob, hold. Excuse me. Hold, okay, the, the hold. structure. Rob, Rob. Yeah. Hold, hold. So you're um, interjecting that bad. Rob, boy. Rob. <laughs> we we Rob, going Rob. overboard. We going overboard. It's no, time's no, up. No, no. Y'all so talking to hold. me for two I'm, hours. I'm, I'm, no, I'm <laughs> saying hold because Prince is uh, on the line. And I okay. don't know how to connect Princeton. So I'm asking okay. you to send them. Can you go to 484-802-5216 um, um, and call Princeton and get them on the line? Hold they were on. Give me, give, me, give, me? give me the number again slower. 484-802-5216. Uh, um, and, and, and then, so his name is okay. uh, Guillaume. He's a, a Sigma from Cheney. And uh, he teaches at um, Princeton. So they're on the line. Um, so I'm okay. trying to get, get them on the line. All right, go ahead and finish. But I, I need to make sure. That's that the Ivy that. League. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just talking but, about, you know, the beats yeah. are flowing, old school yeah. versus new school, you know. And then yeah. we just said, like you, like you were saying earlier, about writing, you, you know, the experience versus the structure. They don't understand the structure and the essence of the artistry. <laughs> right. Right, right. That's right. why they True. can't and, and value it and, and they, they don't know how like you said you got you gotta learn the structure you gotta learn the baseline then you yeah. can manipulate it with your creativity <laughs> in any way you want yeah yeah even even doing three verses since I'm a storyteller you got the beginning the middle so, and the and ending the end. now these kids doing two verses and I'm like, dude, how are you going to put everything? And so now even that structure is broken. Like, dude, is is you always got the beginning, the middle, and the ending. Now like, they got no bridge. You know, it's just crazy. Two minute songs. <laughs> it's it's just crazy. <laughs> like a high coup from all right. Huh? All right. All right. All right. Okay, okay. Stop, stop, stop. All right. So uh so the number um for uh Princeton is once again um is 484-802. Five two one six. I'm on the I'm on the line with him, Maurice. All right, all right. So connect. All right, okay. All right. So 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 go ahead. So um, I wish I could. Yeah, my my laws. By yeah. the way, while we waiting, my laws on my shirt. That's a film I did in 2020. You can view it on Amazon dot prime or uh, Amazon Prime Video, and uh, that's a feature documentary that I did in Charlotte where I had 14 topics. I had murder, I had uh, whites, white power, I had black beauty, I had domestic abuse, I had love and happiness, I had inspiration, 14 topics. I did genius and we had different people play out those topics and give a five minute monologue over music on each topic. And that's tremendous, man. We had murder in there. And so we got people and the music fits the topic oh. and then they talk, it's great, man. Monologues, I put that together. Oh. And I had a tour I was going to do for that. And we were setting up the tour. 
in March of 2020, and then the country shut down. <laughs> and I said, you got, I, I was already set up on Broad Street in Philadelphia. I forget the name of the the, uh, the place, the theater is right there on Philadelphia, the art theater or whatever it is. Man, I was set up there. I had New York set up on Broadway. I had Broadway set up. I was setting up Chicago, Atlanta, Philly. I was going to do the Crampton Auditorium, 1,500 seats at Howard University, and COVID shut down everything. I had investors talking to me, and since that point, they have not came back to the table. I said, Dad, gonna God made me work even harder after that. So now right, I'm right. back beating the pavement again to set things back up again because I was so set up with this Minor Laws movie back in 2020. Now I got to reset things with, with the tours that I'm doing and the shows that I'm doing so I can do Kensington and a whole bunch of other movies that I have on tap right now. And That's Minor Laws. Yep. Amazon sometimes Prime they right now. Out. Sometimes yep. they work out for the good. Yeah. Sometimes we'll see. we want people a part of it that, that okay. God don't want to be a part of. Yeah, okay. I hear you. All right, so, so so Rob, can 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 I make a comment? Rob, yeah, you got uh thirty seconds. All, all right, so so what happens is that a lot of times when you, when you schedule events and it don't work, your insurance will cover it. You're still getting paid, so that's the important thing about having a short event. Your insurance will cover it. Okay. Um, all, all right, so I I need to make sure that can we go to um. So get you almost from Princeton. I know he he's he gonna come on, he gotta jump off. So let me tell you, can you can you handle that? All right, there he is. What's going on, brother? Good evening, brothers and uh and evening, ladies, evening. those of you that are on. How you doing this evening? All right, represent the Ivy League, brother. Go ahead and get down. Oh, man. Okay, all right. So, oh, okay. Too okay. hard is uh HBCU, Cheney University. Oh, okay, <laughs> good deal. So you good know, deal. I call it like this, you know, going from um Going from HBCU to the Ivy League, you know that's my motto. Uh -huh. Gotcha, gotcha. And, and, and no, no, and 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 then um, so get young. Yes, sir. So um, so 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 you did receive the invite to come with uh, Omar to Philly or uh, DC. So that's going to be uh, your choice. But we want Princeton. It, it, it all it all depends because you know I, I got a lot on my plate you know I got yeah Easter I got, Sunday I got kids in college and you know um I'm an avid dad supportive dad uh my kids run track and field so you know on the weekends I'm usually where they at running support okay but then in the end we want Princeton hello. Yeah, I, I'm listening. You want Princeton? But you want you want to speak at Princeton? Is that you want to bring an event to Princeton? No, I want you at Princeton. He bought like he he bought. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I haven't guys? spoke at Princeton. Of course, okay, I've been okay, in okay, Penn. Okay. Okay. Of course, um, I've, Omar, been at, Omar, I've been at Omar, Harvard. Omar, Omar, Omar. So he spoke to one of my friends, uh, Robert Austin, filmmaker. Yes, I, I, I actually, uh, he, I actually he, got Robert a uh, uh, opportunity to speak to some of the people at Princeton University about his project. And he actually got a chance to show his video uh, that dealt with um, uh, Greenwood in um, right. Tulsa, Oklahoma, the, uh, the riot situation. So, I mean, they 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 loved it, um, you know, and, and, so and, they, then, and, and then And then that happened in two weeks, right? You know? Uh, about about that because he, he, it was the right opportunity. You know, he uh, at the time we connected, it was, uh, during Black History Month. Mm, um, and that was the great opportunity, segue for him. Um, everything was in alignment that that provided him the opportunity to come out and um and present his um his piece. Was that and, more than six years ago? How long ago? But that was this year. Oh, this year? That was oh, okay. this that was this year. That was uh right. Black yeah, History because Month. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of Black History Month hasn't been doing what it used to do, man. I used to do like 10 events every February, man. Mm, you know, yeah. now they don't really seem to be as, as turned on about it as, as, you know, as our generation okay. was. Okay. Okay. I, I, think, okay. I think a lot of it got, has to do with um, how we market it. Because, you know, it, it, if truth be told, um, the Black history that we've gotten has, has kind of been um, in the box. Mm. Mark, you're going to learn about Martin Luther King. Right. You're going to learn about the civil rights movement. Right. You know, and it's pretty much stays within that circle. You, what you don't learn about those other things, Frederick Douglass, you don't learn yeah. about 
You know, Malcolm the, X. They never had Malcolm X. No, absolutely. And then the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers always looked at as rebels instead of being part of Black History Month. <laughs> exactly. Well, well they you look know, at them like they criminals wearing yeah, black. You know. Yeah. Well, you know how history goes. You know, in in the moment of time in history, you always looked at as the villain. It's not till yeah. after the fact that you now become a hero. You know, we yeah. look at Muhammad Ali. Everybody yeah. don't realize during that time, Muhammad Ali was looked at as a as a criminal. Yeah, like who's this black man keep bragging about how good he is and how pretty he is? Who's this black yeah, man? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, it ain't like that. All, all, all of our lead, all of our heroes today, back then, were looked upon as villains. Even yeah. even Martin Luther, yeah. Malcolm, Muhammad yeah. Ali. Now these guys want to be liked, and so they want to say anything to the media that's unlikable because they figure it's going to mess up their money. Yeah, so Absolutely. now you got public figures who are terrified of speaking. I said new public figures, or even white public figures spoke out because they understood they would get the microphone over anyone else. So they understood that as a responsibility to their community. Now we got people scared to speak out, talking about that ain't going to make me no money. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't doing that. Like, and man, that's, that's the biggest note of selling out that we could ever look at, man. You in yeah. position and you won't speak. Chuck D talked about that. They yeah. don't speak. We got the five and five won't speak when Public Enemy came out. So that's where we are now. I'm Absolutely. always going to speak up, but they don't give me the microphone no more. They took the microphone away. I got to hey, get it back. Hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to tell you like this, and, and, and this is something I learned. I still continue to learn. Um, don't wait for opportunities to come. Make your opportunities. You That's know? what we're doing now. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we've been always told like, hey, you know, we just want to we just want to um, come in through the door. Sometimes you got to make your own door. Yeah, that's what Maurice is learning right now. Maurice, oh, Maurice, you can't do this again. Now Maurice jumping on it like, all right, I can't stop old Maurice. Let me help him. So now yeah. that's, why, yeah. that's why Maurice put me, because I said, look, Maurice, I, I'm tired of hearing that nonsense. My, I'm going to make it happen some way. Somehow I'm going to make it happen, dude. I got Absolutely. to because I got, I got too much energy, too many skills, too much intelligence, and I'm from the bottom of West Philadelphia. So I'm not backing down from nobody, dude. It ain't in me. We're going to go at it. Until the day I die, we're going to go at it. So now Maurice gets that. Omar's an intellectual, but he got that tough bottom stuff in him, boy, and they ain't hey. got it out of him. Hey, <laughs> hey, you, you, you know what we used to call that at Cheney? What's that? We used to call that the educated thug. That's yep. what it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. That's what it is. Yes, sir. And we, we need more of that as Absolutely. long as they understand the education part trumps the thug. I'm only bringing the thug part out. When you won't respect my education and what Hello. I want to do, <laughs> Hello. that's what Maurice. Then, oh, Maurice, yeah. you, you, you got to stop fighting. What the, look, man, nah. like, if they not gonna open that door, I gotta kick it down, man. You gotta kick you it know? down, make your own door. That's yeah. what we doing. That's what. That's why you gotta bring me over there so I can invite Princeton be a part of that movement. They can talk about it and the whole nine. We gotta go ahead and turn it on. Get everybody what they call it, the grapevine. I gotta do the circuit again so we can put it on the grapevine. The old head, gray bed. Omar Tyree uh. is refueling <laughs> hip hop with the Keep It Clean movement and True Soul and Hip Hop and the flow, and he's doing movies. You see that? All yeah. them things coming together. Oh yeah, right on, a absolutely, absolutely. Right on. Yeah, because that's what I think it's going to take, man. We some us, some of us old guards. Yeah. To, to 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 say, you know what? We've had enough. Enough is enough. You yeah. know, we we've given y'all the opportunity. You know, y'all y'all say. We, we've got a voice. Hear, hear us. Okay, right. we heard you, but you haven't done anything with it. Right. We want so, our legacy uh, okay. to be lasting, and we want to be able to provide a path for the young people in the future. So yeah. right. we're going to have yeah, to go yeah. and okay. I, 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 off that I, desk, okay. like okay. you say. Rob, Rob, Rob. Right on. Uh, okay, okay. And, and then, so I want you all to know, uh, if I say, go to Princeton, uh, like I said, get your own. You go into the Ivy League. He had no idea what that would look like. Well, you got two master's degrees. I expect for you to be teaching on the Ivy League level. Uh, and then that is my expectation. Well, so here's, the I, thing, uh, here's the thing with that, Doc. Why you take that Ivy League education and teach at an HBCU? Yeah, okay, okay, here's, okay, here's okay. the thing. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily teach at Princeton. What I do at Princeton, um, I work in their uh, in their science research laboratory, and I do risk management, um, and um, incident management. So it's, it's more or less along the line of uh, quality assurance, 
uh, project management, uh, things of that nature. Now, I have taught in the past. Okay. Um, okay. But currently, all right. Okay. All right. All right. So, everybody, listen. So, when all my work's on this Kenson project, we may need you in there. At Penn, they are looking at social engineering as injury science. What the hell are y'all talking about? And then that money can be driven to Omar Tyree. That can be driven to you. But at Princeton, at Princeton, you can be a writing fellow. You can get $50,000. Mm. You come in one day and teach two courses. And then you leave. That's it. And then that's what, uh, that's what is what being made uh, available. And so when I started figuring out, uh, you know, this uh, certain thing, it's like, I could get your own tour. He's a veteran. He's a Sigma. I can get him, uh, him on tour. But now you have to be vested in a uh, certain thing. I didn't know that uh, Robert Austin was speaking to uh, Guillaume. Two weeks later, he was on campus. I didn't even know that that thing happened. But uh, Come on, I mean, Doc, you, you got to know better than that. Sigma, some of all. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm from, I'm, I'm, I too, from the bottom, the bottom of Miami, Florida, Liberty City, born and raised. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, hey. I know about being at the bottom and coming up to the top. And y'all all running track over there. My son runs track too, man. He's at North Carolina AT, bro, running at 400 and 800. I know the My coach. son. And he's I know a rapper the coach. now. And here's I, the deal. We talked about it earlier. He can run the 800. You know he can breathe through his lines. The, the dude a dragon, man. I got a song he just did called The Gift. He ran for three minutes. No hook. He's just rolling. So we bringing him out. His name is Brio Noy. And he chose that what? name. Grio Noy. N-O-Y. His name is Kanoy, so he just cut off. But it's Grio. That Grio part, they don't even use the name anymore. You know what I mean? He brought that on his own. Well, I well said, you know man, what? Not, not too many people know what that means. Yeah, you they know, don't. I, and they I, are storytellers and don't know the word. Yeah, so I, I, I'm of Haitian descent. I'm Haitian right. and Cuban. So I, I know it. I know all too well what Grio means. You know, I grew up hearing that. Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. All right. But then uh, football right. player. Uh, I hate to cut play. Short, but uh, I, I gotta uh, get ready to step off for my next meeting. Uh, 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 all right, all right, all right. All right so uh, uh, stay, stay in contact. So definitely, we need, definitely. Uh, we and need I love the energy, and, brothers. And I can. love the energy. I need that in my life. Hey yes, man, sir. bring me yes, everywhere. Sir. Everybody need it. Everybody yes, needs it. It's gifted. It's gifted for my parents, man. They both hey. was energized people, working hard. My pop, 73 now, man, still pop around like he's straight out of West Philadelphia High School. That dude, 73, man. That's he's still bless. popping around. That's that, yeah, that man. swag. No, that's that bless. That's what he got. That's what he got. <laughs> 73. So I already know where I'm going to be with it. I'm 52 Amen. right now. So I'm not losing that, you know, but you want to use that energy for things that uplift the people. And that's, that's what right. Maurice knows. I, I use every iota of my energy. We just need to open up them doors, get that thing rolling with consistency. And I got the skills to close that door up. When, when we get in there, we're going to rock the house, you know, okay. so that's what that's we're doing. All right, all right, all right. Be blessed. All right, all right, all right my partners. brother. All right. All right. And, and and then also, uh, Omar, don't speak for me. Uh, so uh, uh, to say that he is uh, from Cheney, he is from um, Princeton, and he is from the military. That's our job to get things done. He has three children. We still never ask how it is that we can get your books mm. into uh uh, uh, the school systems, yeah. Right, right. And, and then also look at the Rotunda. Uh, that's Indian land. It's big. It's empty. Um, I want that. Um, it's really, really uh, big. And I really uh, uh, want that. And then um, people are afraid uh, to ask you uh, uh, certain uh, questions. You know, and you know, and then you know, and then uh, for me, nobody comes online, you know, without we can have an an uh, answer. So if if they have a, a summer camp program at uh, Douglas uh, place, 
he got he got to order books. Uh, if if we come to Philly and certain things need to be done, that's really really uh, important. And so if Rob goes to uh, the uh, uh, convention uh, in Philly, uh, just wear your t-shirt. Yeah. You, you know. And Matter of fact, Maurice, since you speak on it, I'm glad you said that. I want to make sure I get your information where I can send this information to you, so right. that way you can know what's going on and have some targets also. Right. Uh, 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 right. And, and and then you know, so even when I go back and look at 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 uh, who you are, and my goal is the casinos, uh, and, and it comes at a different kind of level. So I have to position myself, you know, just make sure that everything that we do is in uh, according. So all my now we had a conversation about coupons and this and, and that. So we can do fundraisers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of different people. So is this a different kind of, of operation? My expectation, uh, uh, a month or two weeks before an event, we need to sell out. Uh, that's the only thing uh, uh, that uh, I know. Uh, and, you know, so, and my major thing is that, you know, when, now when we have a conversation, uh, we have to have uh, uh, numbers. So even with Sister uh, uh, Kilani, you know, she has numbers, but how we access uh, the numbers is uh, something totally uh, different. And then what it is that we do is at a different uh, uh, level. But everything has to show up on all social media. It has to show up on AOL, uh, Yahoo, uh, Google. It has to show up on five uh, you know, uh, social media, a uh, network. And so it doesn't show up uh, well, you know, so we got to make sure that everything shows up um, well at uh, different uh, uh, levels. Now, Pat is saying, um, they have to edit this and this will not show up until they check it. And, you know, and so now we have to be uh, very clear about who is doing uh, uh, certain things. So, so I'm saying anybody that deals with uh, Omar, uh, we, have, we have to check your content. Your content has to be checked at oh, all time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, you know, and then, you know, that is a, a different thing. And then, so now we're asking for uh, EPKs, electronic, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, like, no. So now we are asking for, um, you know, just, uh, so then, so I think it's five media. It's it's uh, but it's Instagram, it's TikTok, it's um, Twitter, it's uh, Facebook, uh, it's uh, YouTube, uh, and and then the um numbers. But then it's like, for example, if we say, okay, we gonna come. That's what we're uh, Douglas Rucker. We have to see that on all of the platforms, and we got that's called digital uh, analytics. Uh, and and then you know so so now you know even when we come to uh, Philly, I said Douglas. Now you can ask uh, uh, Omar. You need a, a sponsor. Uh, yep. Omar, he has yep. the urban he has the urban uh, literacy uh, a project. project. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and then you know so when folks come, if you come to uh, if you come to uh, Columbia, and if you come to Philly, we're gonna have all the top uh, writers around. But then now you ask for, um, you know, resumes. And then why don't you ask for all of Omar Tavi's books? Because I thought Flago was the first. And he said, no. The first, Covered on White Campus. Yeah, it was the first. And then Flago. And then Capital City. I wrote about mm -hmm. D.C.'s drug turf underworld during the drug, what they call it, the murder capital years. Yeah, I was yeah, right murder, there in mm -hmm. D.C. Yeah, uh, and, 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 weapons and, years. Uh, Go ahead. And, 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 uh, 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 and then. And then so so also so so Rob is going to do uh, this thing about a uh, faith based initiative. So okay. uh, let's uh, let's keep it real. It comes from um, Leon Sullivan, uh, church um, uh, uh, mentoring. It, mm -hmm. it 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 all comes from him. So we got the uh, nonprofit award. We got a, a lot of things. So uh, OIC is right. 
Yeah, yeah that, that was yeah. my first summer yeah. job at 14, yeah. man, on Broad Street. Uh, Go watch uh, it. And, and then. A whole so, lot of us. You know, yeah. so uh, if I say to uh, OIC, let's get the return then, and y'all build it. Uh, and, and then, you know, that book that it is that you are trying uh, to do is a uh, curriculum. So uh, uh, when Rob comes to speak, uh, we got uh, $100,000 from IBM. Uh, we got $250,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, so that is the uh, uh, the uh, legacy, you know. Right. And, you know, and then, you know, so when Rob, he's coming to speak, uh, from an organization, the uh, Divine Enterprise, that bought one of our buildings. Right. And, um, and the, you got to see what they, they, they say that it looked like. You got to ask what Kenton uh, looked like. Right. You know, and then, you know, and then where it uh, uh, comes from uh, at a very, very uh, uh, different level. So when you come to town, you got to have them walk you through Kansas. Um, you know, at a uh, different uh, level. So, you know, we we are just working for, you know, different things. So whomever uh, you want uh, to meet, you know, because uh, School D created a, 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 a gangster rap. And, and do, do he apologize in 1993? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then uh, the whole thing is that when, uh, when uh, Urban Romance came around and then they came out with a, a, a Neo Soul uh, and then so Omar, you got uh, when you say uh, keep it clean, they won't. Neil so won't. Yeah, yeah. I keep it the clean. Out, I, I, I bust the winds out your car. Uh. uh you, you know, and so you know that is at a uh, a uh, different uh, level. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, you know. So so now. Uh, well, that that was yeah. Jasmine Sullivan, right? Yeah, you know. But then yeah. you know, uh, they just gave Fifty uh, Second Street. And I, I got music for her too, you know that, because you okay. said she's hard okay. to deal with. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so they just gave 52nd Street a uh, right. million dollars. Uh, and then that's our job to write uh, uh, your mural and, and the public service announcement. Right. That's our job. Who just gave 52nd Street a million dollars? Uh, the government. Okay. And, and then, you know, so they got the US uh, Black Chamber of Commerce. They okay. have. They have money uh, available, you know, at a lot of different uh, levels. But mm. for now, you know, uh, uh, we got to ask, you know, because I think um, Douglas. Let's go uh, ask. You know, Let's go ask. So, yeah. so, um, I, I, I think Douglas has money uh, in limbo. Mm -hmm. uh, so he got he got to be able to, you know, uh, just to ask you uh, uh, something. Uh, and, you know, be redundant. You go online and they tell you mm. it's on Indian land. Um, uh, and Dina is very careful about. Do you guys see the building? Uh, mm -hmm. It's do. It's like it's a whole mansion, and nobody is going to do anything uh, with it unless we ask Penn. Hey, Maurice. Yeah. Um, I think as I'm sitting here listening and talking, um, and thinking about that, you know, all the prior <laughs> conversations um, from time before. I think definitely I'm looking at um, with Larry and the promotions and everything, we can definitely use those events that he promotes to tie in what we're doing. Because as we're talking, like I said, we're talking about Schooly D, we're talking about Kensington, we're talking about hip hop, we're, we're talking about artistry. And, right. and, and he, he's the main pillar when it comes in Philadelphia when it comes to dealing with artists. And right. Philadelphia, if, 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 if you want to connect with an artist, connect with Larry. That's why anybody know that know me, that know our relationship, that know we're, we're, you know, we're friends. Right. They, if they want somebody, they'll contact me and say, yo, I need such because um, Larry. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you how big this is, bro. I got the Ain't No Stopping the Song now. I redid it with a dude, and I'm trying to get Meek Mill and Joel Scott on it to upgrade it. Ain't no stopping us now for the kids, the city of Philadelphia. And of course, Meek Mill was the, he's the don of the, of the this ministry or the rap music in Philly now. That's right. And then right Jill now. Scott, I'm already talking to Jill Scott about Kensington, but it's okay. always hard to get them, you know, without the money, you can't, you can't yeah, get them folks to yeah. say yes. Even yeah. though it's a classic song that automatically would be a hit automatically. 
for the yeah, whole city, yeah. for everybody. But again, getting them guys to say yes, I got that record ready to go right now. I had it ready since what January, you know. So that's the kind of stuff where once I'm in position, stuff like that starts happening. And I'm in the middle of it. That gives me incredible. And I introduced the song. I want to introduce this for the Oakland Wildcats, Coach Brown, and the whole city of Philadelphia. Because we used to listen to that record every weekend before we played our football game uh -huh. from 79 to 82. <laughs> every weekend. Yeah, the yeah. That was it, man. So to bring okay. that song I'll, back, okay. you know. Okay. But yeah, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but then also, so I said, check out, listen up, uh, media. And that's Malcolm Jenkins, uh, uh, the football player. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just saw that yesterday. Uh, yeah, know. that's tapping and, the hill. Uh, and, and then, you know, when we had uh, to do uh, marches here with all the fraternities, uh, uh, we had to have insurance. Uh, we had to have a lot of things that was uh, going on. Uh, and, and then, so uh, I say, you know, how we position uh, ourselves. Uh, Malcolm, how would you like to use Ain't no stopping us down, uh, and, and, you know. And then just ask him, cause he don't, he doesn't have anything uh, uh, going on uh, uh, at all. Uh, and then so now I have to go to uh, court uh, this week with uh, uh, Kenyatta Johnson and Kenny Gamble. Uh, y'all, y'all can tell me I play the song, and uh, I would if I was just. Uh, uh, ask but then if there are three versions of ain't no stopping us down all kinds of way it would come in a a different way and all we gotta do is uh, it, it, Bill Scott it, and, and uh Mick Mills. And Big Mills that's how, that how was you. Can you get <laughs> yeah um, that's you okay, okay okay so all we have to, to uh to do uh is is um do ain't no stopping us down and yeah. put pictures in of uh, Meek Mills, uh, you know, e you know. So I'm saying, you know, even though uh, I uh, know him, uh, and so we have to be very uh, uh, careful that if we do ain't no stopping us down, uh, just uh, do it in front of a uh, blues bay, uh, you, you know. And then you know, so uh, gamble and huff, that is just some uh, totally different. So uh, don't do the lyrics, uh, just do the soundtrack. That's it, you, you know, and then that is at a different kind of, of level. And don't use Oh My Tabby's name, use, use Hot Lava, uh, you know. And then, so how you say them, put the song in, put all your books in the background. Those are all your uh, uh, books. And then I can say, uh, you know, Energy Science, sponsored, they may sponsor hundred thousand dollars they lie a whole bunch of, of of dumb stuff but then uh you know so you know that's what i'm saying you know working on uh the money that uh we need uh uh to ask for you know just when rob comes into town so we got half a million dollars mm -hmm. you know at yeah. a different kind of 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 level uh so i say ask for the pew uh ask for all you know just different kinds of award, they give out like a, a award to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We yeah. never asked for it. Yeah, the poor, uh, the poor Lord, hundred thousand dollars. We ain't never asked for it. So now we have got to be able uh, uh, to ask. You know, yeah, just if we if we if we get that kind of money, I could do all the stuff for a whole year and kill it, man. Absolutely kill it. Yeah, I, I, you know, and, and you know, and then you know, so. Uh, when you ask, you ask me about you know this uh, certain thing. So uh, uh, Byron Allen, he 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 sued Comcast, ten million dollars. Um, you know he he was the only one that interviewed me when I won the NAACP Image Award backstage. Uh, Destiny's Child uh, was back then. Shamar Moore was back there. Nobody was paying attention to me. He was the only one that interviewed me. <laughs> of course, he wasn't in the position he's in now, but I wonder right. if he remembers that. He was bad. Byron Island was the only one that interviewed me back okay. there when I okay. won my NWDC uh, Image uh, Award. Okay. Yeah. But, 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 but I'm, I'm saying so. That needs to be uh, noted. And if you ever go to the NAACB Axel competition, it's like uh, America's uh, Got Talent. Mm -hmm. They got, you know, they got like uh, 
50 different categories. Mm -hmm. Dude, it is this one girl saying, um, at last and pass, fake the hell out. Uh, and, you know, and then so what I'm saying, if we look at the uh, history, so the NWSP, they owe you essence of you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then I say, listen, you know, the, the University of Arts, they have a program. You can teach them no degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you just got to be able to uh, ask, you know, uh, you, the, the University of Penn, uh, Temple, they ain't got no degrees. Yeah. But, but you got to be able to ask. So in Rittenhouse, they have the Rittenhouse uh, uh, writers. Uh, everybody goes and become a, a bestseller. Uh, and then so you don't even teach our camp a college they got a press. Yeah. You know, uh, and then you know, so the whole thing uh, is that you know, Howie uh university, you know, that's a different kind of of, of press. Uh you know, right. you know, you know, if you run the Howard uh Howard program, you just have the pedigree. You don't have to have to have degrees. You don't. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I'm gonna I, tell you guys what. Uh, what time is it? Because I got a couple okay, other things okay, go, I gotta make go, tonight. Okay, yeah. okay, go. All right, all right. Yep. All right so, uh, so, uh, uh, Omar. Uh, yep. we, uh, we thank you. Uh, and so we see that. I, I thank uh, you guys. And yeah. then, and then, uh, Omar. Every time you're online, yep. where, where are, where, where your whole brand? All your different brands. And then, now, how many books you got? I don't have any books at the no, house. No. I got how many, thirty. How many books? books, books? Have, thirty. Have, thirty. Have you written? Including like six ebooks, original ebooks. Yeah. You call you, you call Yeah, me. you you just Google them, Omar Tyree, and my name pops up on all of them. You, you got a whole list of 10 pages of stuff, you know. Yeah, just Google the name. But yeah, 30 books. But now we gotta get in this music and movies. And then I wanna do like Kenley Gamble, and Leon Huff had three thousand songs. I think I'm too old to get that many, but I can go after a thousand with these kids. <laughs> and then the movies. Um, I still can do three to four movies a year because I wouldn't be directing all of them. You just put them together, then I can co-write with a lot of other projects. I'm co-writing right. two screenplays right now with people that needed a co-writer. I came right in, tightened them up. I got a meeting on one of them tomorrow, and we talking about finances for another one. So once I get in the movie game, man, because I can be a script doctor. People don't understand that. I can tighten up your script and make it work. So that's, that's another game, man. They typically get white boys to do that. I'm doing that for black people. So once I get in that game, man, knock on wood. I just got to live. Let me That's live. what I'm doing now for, mm. for a play right now. Re-editing, yeah. rewriting this script. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm doing that with, with screenplays. So, you know, once you start doing that, now you can take a bad screenplay and make it good. When you do that, man, ain't nobody stopping what you're doing at that absolutely. point. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. So, yeah, uh, let's just let's get everything popping, uh, uh, Maurice. You talk, talk to everybody. Let's get the money. And I'm committed to making it pop, man. That's what I do. That's okay. all. Uh, uh, okay. Appreciate all right, you. All right, uh, uh, Omar. Thanks, okay, partners. Thank you. Yeah, okay. you got it. Uh, you got it. Uh, and 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 then so uh, so Rob, you know That's that the... uh, 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 Morris Brown is, is open for a uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, and so I say to so remember, say who said y'all was raising money for a change, and y'all y'all didn't give them the money. The uh, the the alumni. Well, I wouldn't listen to say cool. Anything say cool says, you best believe it got about maybe 10% true. Yes, we were raising the money, but every all the other rest of the story, you got to be careful what he said. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, 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 Cheney had one of the top theater programs. Uh, and uh, they bought I, know, in, I was and, there at the time. And they bought in Martin Luther King. Uh, daughter uh, to do it. I think Ch uh, Cheney had a, a choir. Cheney uh, competed for like uh, the Black Theater Festival. And then I, I think that they supposed to have competed for a, uh, a, a Emmy and a student Grammy. Uh, they don't have, they don't remember uh, the history uh, uh, at all. So we should not do anything uh, at Cheney unless they buy your books. Nothing. And that's, and that's one of the things I was kind of like trying to emphasize to you before, we have to put a standard at Cheney. We have to hold them to a standard of something before we bless them in a way, you know what I mean? Because they they gotta, you know, they they need to be made to be committed to something in some way. But, but then also like uh, the black houses don't have a speaker's bureau. Uh, and so you can be a alumna 
or a former student, um, as long as you are popular, it is uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't speak. I don't speak at any black colleges unless you carry my book. And that's um, how it should be. And, uh, and then you know, so I'm gonna drop in. I'm gonna do this. I'm going to uh, 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 do that. And it's at a very uh, yeah. different uh, a level. And you know, so you at uh, Cheney, and you know, so I, you know, uh, Dr. Leon Sullivan, he created courses, and it went towards Cheney. Go ahead with your bad self. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you know, so that is what the uh, uh, different thing uh, is, you know, and you know, so now, you know, so I keep saying they don't know that we did the uh, the uh, National African American too. They uh, they don't know anything about uh, uh, the birds, the uh, the cocks, you know, you know, and everything. They don't know anything <laughs> about that. They don't know anything about fem. They don't know anything about the nonprofit. Uh, uh, institute, you know, and so it is at a at a different uh, level about how it is that uh, we move, how it is that we that we did a lot of things. So, when, so when I asked, I said, uh, "Do you have documentation of who I am?" Rob Douglas takes my word. He changes. That's a bad boy. That uh -huh. that man, dude, he changes. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry, gang. I I had a, a call for with, with with my lawyer friend about uh, Douglas. 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 I uh, so so I said I said I said Douglas has taken my words, uh, and it scares me about what it is that he has done, uh, with uh 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 my words, uh, and then you know all uh he got to do. He thinks that you got to be there to direct. You know, you can direct from where you are. Absolutely. You know, and then you know when he calls people to, um, you know, online, you know, or or uh, you know, uh, just come see him because uh, you lucky. Oh, oh my God, line. I said, Oh my, uh, let's go. So Rob can handle his business uh, uh, real quick. Uh, you know, and you know, so now they're looking at uh, environmental humanities, public health, uh, economics. Uh, and um, Bob, they're looking at um, uh, uh, injury science. Rob, I have not, you know, when my boy won, um, uh, he won $100,000 oh. uh, from, you know, uh, community yeah. scholars. And, and I said, listen, dude, you don't even know uh, how it is that you have to uh, compete. Of course, Penn came in and, and then did uh, his visual. Uh, you know, and then you know he do he took it from um uh a way back slides and a lot of of things. Uh, you know, and then you know, uh dude, he was like um wow, uh, he was speaking about uh you know just different kinds of levels and it's called uh energy science. So that's me, everybody in the house of the Mojo magazine comes from nonprofit institute, FEM. It comes from all of them, but uh, you no. Know, and then you know, so so uh, Pim, uh, they asked one one last dollar, and he, and here we go. Uh, if you get hurt and you get in an ambulance and you get to the hospital and you see a cop, uh, that's going to be science. Uh, you know that that you could just uh, uh die, you know, uh, on site of seeing uh, a cop. Uh, I like the cop. You know, you know, yeah. you know, but then, you know, you know, I had to say, um, you know, the whole uh, idea, and I said, listen, I, I, I go to Harvard, and when they do adolescent uh, self-destruction, and I talk to Rob, and, and, and I say, uh, come on home, uh, and I said, you know, I hold tour, I said a lot of things, what it is that we did, you know, about Harrisburg, and, you know, uh, where we were, so I was like, listen, if anybody got the uh, taste, y'all should see us, uh, uh, you know, walking by each other. We didn't put that shit together. I said we were doing a whole. Uh, I said it's laughable, I, and, I, and I said it. I said our behavior is just uh, 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 laughable. I said, listen, I don't know. Uh, my wit, like I said, laugh. No, it was the dumb shit. Uh, you know, and you know, and then you know, so it was a different 
Uh, 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 of level. And I said, I said, you know, I said Rob was running and uh, he and, and uh he almost uh uh got shot. And then and, and I, I said I thought Rob was used to uh taking the bullet. You know, and and, and uh Rob said, listen, um he uh, he said, uh 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 close the door. And I said, I said, Rob, what happened? He said, I almost uh, got shot. I said, I said, where were you? And he, he said, I was uh, uh, on the corner. I guess you got to wave a flag. I'm Rob. It's okay. You know, and then you know, you know, and then you know. So that is what makes it it uh, uh, something totally uh, a different. But Rob, if you do the dance and then break out into a monologue, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you know, and then you know. It is just something uh, uh, totally uh, different. I said when we went to uh, you know uh, uh, the universal wellness thing, and they kept asking us, "What shall we do?" I didn't even know. And I said, "Rob, Rob got the books uh, and uh, the pictures." And I said, "I said, Rob, you did a very, very uh, good uh, job." So that was on our uh, our uh, agenda. Rob, they have uh, the Black Conference of Higher Education, uh, and I said, I said Rob was a part of that, uh, uh, and then uh, Kenya, they said his name was not listen. I said he got impeached, and, and, and I said you got to look at the whole history of who was on. What you say that again? I got it. I didn't get impeached. No, 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 no. Kenyatta. Oh, Kenyatta. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then and then so they won't even bring back uh, the old guard. And uh, and then you know that uh, uh, they should, and, and I kept saying, so that may be uh, uh, my job to bring back uh, the old guard, uh, you know. And then you know, so do I have to look at it, you know, because you know, even when we uh, uh, talk, you know, and uh, uh, Omar went to uh, you know Central. Um, he claimed that he like asked you, uh, uh, was he an athlete? You know, and then you know that is this a different kind of science. Oh, so Omar says he says, "Listen, uh, Maurice, um, I got a uh, a uh, uh, Kenison, and you the star of it." No, I'm not. I didn't ask, I didn't ask you to, to do that. You're the star. No, listen, dude. Uh, do I worked on the film with uh, Benny Boone? They started the film in the last scene. The last scene, and they film whomever comes in uh, to town. Uh, no, no, that would that would be a because uh, uh, you know that's supposed to be my, be my ending scene. I gotta start that first, you know, and you know, so that's why it is at a uh, different level, uh, you know, and then you know, so I say to Omar, I say, come to Atlanta. Uh, you know, just see uh, what's uh, going on. Uh, you claim that you are right, or you got this, or you are that. I said, so when we have a scene, you got to show Rob's book. You got to show something. All you got to do in the background is show uh, Doug's Rucker a video. Um, you know, and so Lois said, you know, Lois, uh, one of her pieces of video is uh, they showed it in one of the movies. She got $2,000. A video. This uh, uh, can I can I ask you some um, as far as this meeting the, the agenda because uh, I had to step out I, I, I have this community development stuff I'm doing but um, I wanted to know what is the uh, I'm kind of quoting br br brother Rob here he said uh, what are we going to do so the action behind this conversation tonight. What have you? Uh, okay. okay. All right. So, I, okay. okay. So, 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 so I said to you, uh, send one of your performers, your piece, to Maryland, and then bring them to Philly, uh, your pieces, and then you know, and then that is the uh, uh, the uh, process, uh, you know, and then you know, and you know, do it under Urban Literacy, do it under Omar, so he raises money uh, uh, for you. So he has a five city tour, uh, and so you can you can select a different kind of of people, 
But my pitch is that in all of his movies, his films, that uh, he just shows you all just throwing something. So, he, so you know, so. I would, I would only be, I think I could only commit to the May 29th uh, project when he's here in Philly. So I can, um, that gives me plenty of time. Okay, stop, uh, right stop. Now. Okay, so all you, you got to do, uh, no, yeah. no, okay, all you got to do is say, when people come in, just show your video. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, that, okay. that's no, the, no, okay, no, no, I'm saying I, on the screen. I do that. I, okay, I uh, you, you know, uh, you know, and then you know what it is that I'm saying, you know, on the uh, uh, the uh, screen, you know, you know, and you know, so when when, when uh, Omar come, uh, so I want him to to, uh, to drop in, I want him to drop in the PSA for you, and drop in the PSA for what Rob uh, is uh, uh, doing, uh, and then you know, uh, this whole thing about uh, you going to uh, LaSalle. Uh, I want every by who we know. No, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't say that. I said uh, LaSalle has been, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Doc. I mean, Miss Rush and uh, a few of their colleagues, you know, um, wanted me to attend there if it was. But I don't have any desire. Okay. To okay. To okay. No. 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 Okay. 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 So the only thing I want them uh, uh, to do is say uh, thank you, uh, LaSalle. And we welcome Douglas Walker. Drop it in. Drop it in. You know, and so everybody who comes to uh, town, uh, we drop in. And and then that it is that that it is that uh, we do. We drop in at all kinds of of different um, places. And and so I said. Uh, Oh my. That, what I'm saying is, Doctor Anderson, I'm not, I'm not understanding like the, um, the structure of how we see. Like I'm saying, like let's let's use May 29th for example. Where does this event take place? And okay, I, okay. I send, I, I, I emailed you that uh, information. I also asked you, are you gonna have your artists come into town? Um, you know, and then so uh. Uh, uh, our job is um, uh, uh, Rob. He is going to come back. Uh, you know, so so I, I emailed you that, but then you know when when you ask Rob about what it is that he is going to be uh uh doing, uh, I said you know ask him to wear your t-shirt, ask him to play uh you know your uh song because Rob comes from the nonprofit institute, Penn. That's where Rob uh, 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 comes from. So uh, what I was saying to uh, Omar, uh, next You're time- You're on mute, Douglas. Uh, You're on mute. Uh, hello? Yeah, you know Miss Isabella Snap. I mean, Maps, I'm quite sure. Uh, no, no, she wasn't in charge back then. Okay. No, okay. she wasn't. Okay. Uh, 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 you know, and then, you know, so, uh, and so I said, you know, the Black Conference of Higher Education, is uh, in town uh, and my folks run it and they should have asked us certain things. So now we gotta start uh, uh, asking, you know, you know, just for, you know, uh, a lot of things. I said, Omar, don't bring your black ass uh, 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 in town, the Urban Literacy Project, and you ain't sponsoring anything. Mm. You look like a fool. Mm. So it means that he gotta sponsor your event. He would look like a, a, a damn fool coming into town, not sponsoring anything whatsoever. He never told me about that five city tour. I said uh, DC, LA, uh, Philly, uh, Atlanta, and Chicago. Well, I know he said he's not going. To, that's what I'm saying. Like like um like the, the chain of communication. I I I, I just like to have it really concrete for me. Because um, because we, we, we are revamping the play and we also I also got a work that's going out and another piece that I'm getting ready to discuss with some people out West Philly uh, doing this. Uh, I think y'all have something out there called the, uh, the the Black Man's March for the Father Day. Um, I think it's doing. I think that's Brother Bilal piece. Excuse me for a minute, fellas. Yeah. So uh, I'm trying to. Um, see about that so I, I i i really i just want to like be clear of what 
What are you asking? Okay. I know you asked me for okay. a video okay. for okay. May 29th. I'm not going to perform because I'm not a performer. So what do you want me to bring to Omar's? Okay. All right. So uh, Bilal does the Father's Day Valley. Right. Uh, uh, and all you got uh, to do is say, this is my message as a father to you all. And bring on your performance. That's it. That's all you got. Uh, 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 so do. I can probably get... Um, I could probably get do like a, 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 a like a ten minute skit maybe of the play a, a scene from the play from the yo put the gun down. No, it it is outside. I understand now, that. Now now now, uh, now you can play uh, the music, uh, but uh, but then uh, also you know even when you uh, uh, do or, or even if you get a video. And then do a collage with uh, with you and him, you know. But uh, but then also, you know, when you look at the numbers, it's going to be really uh, important, uh, you know. So I can step in, um, uh, you know, to do so. How is okay? It's, it's, this is going to take place at the Rotunda, am I correct? What? No. This event, May 29th. No. Where's it going to be taking place at? I mean, just, downtown. I just, where at downtown? Downtown Square. Square? Okay, Rittenhouse Square. And what, that's the Ethical Society? Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. You no, know, and then, so, you know, uh, typically, if you go to the Ethical Society, then uh, the Rittenhouse uh, uh, Rights Group come and watch you and uh, get a contract. So that's where Solomon Jones comes from, uh, McKinnon comes from. So I, I said, so don't step out there. Uh, and do uh, just certain thing. He's going to Langston Hughes. That's bus boys and poets. That's who Langston Hughes is. You better know it. Don't even play around. Uh, you know. You know. And you know. So when he is going um, on tour, it is something uh, totally uh, different. But you clocked him on his Facebook. I didn't know that. Who oh, I blocked you on Facebook. I, I, I said you clocked uh, Omar. You, you asked about his Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I thought you saw a block from Facebook. Yeah, I did. No, no, no. But uh, uh, but then, dude. But then. Yeah, uh, I remember that. I remember uh, running across it. Um, I, I never read a lot of his work. I just you know skimmed through it. But I had always admired this young brother because uh, I, I met him at Howard University. I I also believe uh, he came to Fayetteville, North Carolina, one time. I'm not sure, uh, but um, I've always admired. Uh, him because of what how he took his his package and branded and knowing knowing of him from there to now is something that that I I always will appreciate in any artist or any person you know so I and, to, and just to, to to be on this Zoom meeting with him for me personally it was an honor you know that's just how I I took it you know I, I admire that because I don't know anything about rap the funny thing about when I was growing up and the rap was coming in, I came from a household of, of jazz. And so the closest I got to rap was probably like the last poets, uh, mm -hmm. Gil Heron, you know, Brian Jackson, the Midnight Band. And I listened to a lot of jazz fusion, like Return to Forever, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Maha Vishnu Orchestra. And to, to my father, that was the crazy, and my father was strictly uh, Ahmed Jamal, um, you know, the classical jazz player. And when I started playing um, uh, this uh, weather report music and all this stuff, my father said, he said, what in the hell is you playing up there? I said, dad, this is new jazz. This is like jazz music. He said, ain't nothing but a bunch of damn noise, you know? <laughs> and then he said, it's them reefers. It's them reefers you're smoking for. <laughs> So, so to me, that was my only understanding of, of, of hip hop because I, I never really, you know, uh, uh, appreciated as, as, as how I hear you guys talk about it, um, and especially being DJs. And it was never my, um, my, my flair, uh, my, my taste in music, you know. Um, um, but, but then, you know, so I, I, I say that- uh, The last like, post is the best thing that ever was. But, 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 but I, I said, everybody, uh, Public Enemy, who I went to school with. Public Enemy. Uh, no, I, I said, I said, they damn liars. They made that shit up. I don't even know where they got uh, 
uh, conscious mind. I think that probably was on uh, probation. They had to do like the community service. That's not who uh, they were. But I say, and, uh, and sitting down and us looking at uh, hip hop and doing uh, spoken word, we had to look at uh, gangster rap. Uh, and that's what Rob and Black Ice and a lot of people uh, uh, come in. So then, you know, dude, we came in at a different level of, of, of spoken word. Uh, you know, uh, we toured the country. Uh, we sing, we dance, we do a a whole bunch of things. But uh, we come with uh, five different elements. And so we have to come uh, with, you know, a lot of of different uh, things. Uh, so, dude, I really didn't um, understand uh, uh, hip hop because uh, uh, they said last night a DJ saved my life. What what, what did a DJ do in your house last night? You know, yeah. you know, you know, uh, and, you know, and then um, you know, so you know, when you look at you know what it is that oh you God. are are trying to do, if you walk Omar through your neighbor, they would not know who, who the hell he is. No, they they probably wouldn't. They probably wouldn't. Uh, but I don't, they don't take anything away. I, you know, I'm going back to something. Now, my appreciation of rap was when I was actually, oh, my man, Dr. Hall. How you doing, sir? Hello. Hey, listen, um, my, my, my appreciation of rap kind of changed when I was working on this project because as I said, I had to get those young folks because I knew I told them I knew nothing about rap. And we did this piece. Um, um, we had, we were doing um, uh, uh, Rodriguez uh, piece. Um, uh, what's this? Uh, I like it like that. But they had a piece, a version by Cardi B, and they was just telling me it was just the beat that changed it. Mm. I but I asked them same thing that um, that um, Omar asked them. Can you make this? I said, I cannot have profanity in that. And they were capable of writing good lyrics and, and good and good rap music to this play. They brought it to a whole. And so I know that they were able to do it. If they could have that kind of rap music that they put in that play, this is original music. The, the reason why the play has not been videotaped is because of legal reasons and, and copyright stuff like that. But if they could write the same kind of music that they did in this play and put it on the radio, it, it, would, it could change the course of how our children think about themselves because they wrote some good music, uh, some good rap, some good rap that I kind of remember from the days of when rap first begun. It was a happy type of music. It was joyous, you know? Uh, okay, okay. All right. All right. okay. All right, so, so what happens is that uh, professionally, uh, no one is supposed to look at anybody that they can uh, emulate. Uh, that's a no. And then um, number two, if you want to have them uh, do variations of their work, uh, you do it, and they probably would, would not even know it. Yeah, no, this it, was their original work. This was all. No, no their okay. Original. So this is what I'm saying. You can uh, do variations of their work. Yeah. They probably would not even know that it is their work. Uh, and and I said, Rob, I watched uh, Douglas uh, put in my pieces. And I said, it's the scariest thing I've ever seen before in my life. I said, it was just amazing how he put certain things in. Uh, and it was just uh, me. Uh, but then you, uh, you know, so you did not tell me. I kept saying, this motherfucker is a bad writer. And you said, it reaches you. Uh, you know, and then, you know, at a uh, different level, when you see artists, uh, when you see uh, uh, Omar, when you see something, I I did send you the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Yeah, I, I'm quite sure you did. I, I, I got, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm overwhelmed with emails from different perspectives. So like, if it ain't, you, you know, uh, but then, but, but, but then, you know, so. That uh, is, is okay, but then it's, it's, it's like I said, the first uh, nonprofit institute that was Rob and I. Okay. So you no, know, you know, but but then so so now you were the one to ask for certain things. Always ask for uh, uh, nonprofits to help you out again, and you know to uh, dude, they can take your emails and put it uh, into sound. 
Yeah, no, yeah. It, it's been you know, and you know, and then you know, so so that's why I'm saying. So it is a an uh 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 interesting thing, you know, about how they say that uh you talk about uh you know this dorm a lot of things. You no, know, and you know, and so you know, when everybody comes online, it is that a, a, a different uh perspective. So tonight, a lot of people are not allowed to come online. Uh, you know, you know, just for a uh, uh, certain reason. But you know, the whole idea about you, uh, uh, Morris Brown, uh, you know, no. So they, they have, they have nothing. They ain't got nothing left. Uh, yeah, I know, know. I, I know, I know. They, uh, you know, but, but okay, but, but then, you know, that's what that's what it is I'm saying. So, so you know, when when you say, uh, uh, LaSalle, LaSalle just hit the, the news. They ain't got no no minorities. They, well, they they're working on it. I, I got I have a meeting with them on fact on Friday. It's a whole bunch that you know. LaSalle is 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 doing the same plan that they did at the university up uh, uh, at at univ I mean um up there uh, University of Penn. They're doing the same thing that they're doing at Temple University, and that is gentrification, gentrifying a community. LaSalle has to come through my organization. And I have to get these property owners who the majority of those people who own those CM CMX twos are African American. They probably, uh, I had one guy who had $41,000 taxes on this building. I got it put down to almost zero through the tax review board. I'm trying to encourage my black folks not to sell out to uh, the, the, these white folks. And I had to talk to someone They told me, Doug, what you're doing is commendable. But you got to understand a person economic situation. And if they feel, I'm, I'm looking at what I inherited and what your mom left you, what your father worked for. I believe in those type of uh, um, integrities because I can't see myself selling this home that I have inherited from my family. Um, but I got to go through this on this avenue. And, and this this is a white institute who okay. are sending little I mean black folks to talk to me, but the power behind it uh, okay. is uh, uh, not okay. what okay. looks like uh, me. Uh, all right, so so what, what Penn told us it's called estate trust and wills, and and then so that means your house, um, I will take care of your house. You will get certain kinds of money. Dr. Neil, can, I mean, Dr. Um, Maurice, can I say hello to Dr. Neil Hall, please? Dr. Neil Hall, hello. Can oh, you hear well, me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. I don't Dr. know if you remember meeting me once with please. Maurice coming from your Black book tour. It was done out there in, in West Mount Airy. And you, we, you, the three of us went to a little restaurant on um, up in yes. Chestnut Hill. Yes, I do remember that. Okay. Yes. But please don't use your time to greet me. We can talk uh, later. Uh, okay. okay, I just no. want to say hello you. to you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes, and, 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 then, and then stop asking uh, Dr. Neal if he remembers uh, certain things because uh, uh, he's been, uh, it's been a long time, um, oh, you know, since uh, a, Dr. Uh, Dr. Neal has a, a, a been around. It's and, okay. It's and, okay. I, I have a CD uh, uh, with me, uh, and, and 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 unfortunately, my CD player went down. But I used to play that during the time when I was working on the script, and um, I just heard this man the way he read uh, uh, his pieces was like, man, this is what I'm talking about. And um, I've just never, and I'm not do saying this to flatter you. I just love the way. The, the, the projection and you can feel it. It, 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 it had its own voice beyond your voice. And it was wonderful piece. And I thank you, Dr. Henderson, for letting me have that CD. And, and so and so that's what I have been um, trying to tell uh, uh, Dr. Neal. We are still trying to play uh, uh, catch up. And, and I said, uh, you, know, you know, so uh, the stuff that he does is just, you know, it's a, a different kind of a piece. It's a different kind of work. So I said, I said level. Right, right. So I said, uh, come with me uh, to uh, Maryland. Uh, you know, I said, so people can hear you. And so he doesn't know that they, uh, his work, uh, they call him that injury science. Well, well, well. Who yeah. even knew uh, 
uh, the United uh, States needs to get more. You know, you know about that. You know, and then you know, so uh, you know, so he is working on an album, uh, 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 a film. Uh, you know, and uh, his words is this. Um, so he got it translated in in different kind of uh, you know languages, and you you know, so he said, "Leave me my name." And um, leave me in my house. I need my house, okay? <laughs> Pay my taxes. You know, you know, and, and so, you know, and I said to him, I said, you know, he's been around us for a uh, long time, uh, you know. And, you know, I think uh, somebody said, somebody sent me pictures like uh, around two, uh, 2013. And, and I said, listen, um, we had the Paul Wilson house. It's, uh, uh, you came in, you were new. It was uh, Kamika from Howard. It was Kyle uh, from Ting. Uh, it was uh, uh, Malik from, from Ting. And it was Eric uh, from uh, Lincoln. And then I said, then it was the Black Writers uh, Institute. Uh, and, and I said, it was a different kind of level. And he had, he, he has handled himself do so well. So I haven't been in a place that he has not gotten the same relationship. Uh, you know, and then you know, it is uh, uh, amazing, and I, and every time I watch them, you know, it is at a different kind of, of level about um, you know uh, uh, his work. Uh, you know, and I kept saying, "How long have I known you?" You know, and you know, and you know, and I tell you, but I said, "Listen, we went to New York at the Langston Hughes Library, gentlemen, and and, and, and it was close by to buy." Uh, the Black Library Association. He won the award. Awesome. I, I, I didn't know they had the award. I had no idea that they had the award. The gift you know, will make room for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know, but you, and then, you know, so, you know, that is, uh, uh, it is, you know, uh, what it is that uh, I'm saying, you know, watching works are. Uh, in a different kind of way, you know. Uh, and you know, he's a surgeon, but who who leaves it? He left his job. Uh, this... uh, you know, you know, just to do the uh, uh, the uh, uh, right thing. Uh, and sometimes, uh, I don't I don't mess around with him, dude. You know, and you know, and you know, and so this is what the uh, the major thing is. Is that now when we ask for black colleges, you know, just to uh, bring us in, do if they bring in um, uh, Neil, if Lincoln, Cheney, Morris Brown, bring in Neil, um, uh, he probably will uh, come do it uh, and give money away to nonprofits. You know, and then you know, and then you know that is is, is what it is that uh, he do it because of love. You know, and then you know that is something uh, totally uh, different. Uh, and so, uh, Rucker, do you hear me, Douglas? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Right. And 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 then so, uh, LaSalle would be a good place to bring in uh, uh, Doctor Neal. And you know, you know, as a uh, benefit, it has to come through the right people at the right kind of time. And, and then that would be uh, something totally uh, different, you know, you know, and, and then, you know, but I'm saying like, like so whatever you do with LaSalle, so uh, everything I know from business, LaSalle told me, you know, uh, uh, take them off of me. Rob? Style nonprofit, there you go. Okay, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and, and so like uh, uh, a lot of things that it is that I'm saying, you know, if you go to uh, uh, LaSalle, uh, hello? Yeah, we're listening. Right. Come on. And, come and, on. and, and then, you know, so LaSalle has a beer department. Uh, there's nothing going on. Jackson Penn has a beer department. They got to do uh, one play a year with Black people. They got to do it. Not LaSalle. Mm -hmm. No one. Yeah, but see what I'm saying is with LaSalle, I'm I'm I mean, like I, I have oh my god, I got this phone and I got 
I don't understand. Okay. With, with LaSalle University, you know, this is a new uh, 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 community uh, partnership. And what I'm saying, it does bring to, to the table opportunities for, for, for that type of engagement. Because I'm, I, I, LaSalle is aware that the Children's Shelton CDC, yes, we, I am about the community, but they're also aware um, of, of my idea for this, uh, you know, this, this Center for the Arts, which I, I believe it may happen or not. But also it allows me to bring, like Dr. Neil Hall could very well attend there. I can set up a program. I have the, um, the connections and the, and the friendship or the partnership with them to do a presentation, to do this evening where, where he could be heard. I, I have no problem with that because it is a part of, of us offering community engagement in this community. And, and believe it or not, everything that I have uh, and, and, and my staff and the community has done, it has always, it is a first. We finally got a mural partnership with Jane Gordon from the Mural Arts Project. Uh, Maurice, we actually bought that newsstand, which we're going to turn into a healthy smoothie shop. Um, you know, our first community cleanup. It's about community, but I want people to understand. I try to get these kids to understand the importance of education. That is why, to me, it is so important to return back to school at 60, and, and I'm good with it. You know, I, like I said earlier, I, had, I have a, a lot of regrets of dropping out of college at Morris Brown Institute. Um, I've seen where it hindered me once I, I had a job and, and, and when this guy came in and he had no experience, but he had a degree. And I was really hurt by that. So education is very important to me, um, but I, I, I understand my position and how I must re-enter it. So I, I don't really want to attend LaSalle but if Latal is willing to pay me, uh, pay for my tuition as a returning senior in their school, I would take advantage of it, you know? Okay, I'll, 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 all right. So, and then my whole thing, uh, you have to ask uh, beyond and above uh, their expectations. Uh, and so when Rob comes uh, 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 to town, I said, Rob, uh, come with me. We were writing grants. We were uh, uh, on tour. And then so the director, she had to have a degree. And she, she didn't have no credits. So I said, uh, give me your background. I looked at the whole history of her background. She got the credits to finish her degree from Thomas Edison. And they kept right, it. Right, 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 right. I, I mean, I, I, I remember you told me that. Okay, that okay. just sent me information. Okay. I, and, and then, you know, so uh, a lot of, of things. Um, so, 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 Val, uh, what do you think? I think it sounds good. Um, and, and definitely we need to um, collaborate and, and just really be more clear on on who we're connected to and, and what are the things that we can offer and what are the things that they can offer and how we can um, we can come together and, and allow each of our products boost one another because we're all heading for the same goal. We, we uh -huh. all. Uh, uh, but then, you know, uh, I said, you know, being at the nonprofit in FEM, when we went there and I asked, I said, are there any grants available? Uh, and, uh, they said, yes. I said, send it to me. We got it done overnight. Uh, you know, and then, you know, so a lot of things, so a lot of grants are just application. That, that's, that's all uh, uh, it is. Uh, you know, and so now when uh, we look at it, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, um, who are you? What's your arrival you board? And who are your colleagues? And it comes to me at a different level about who is who and who does what. Uh, I asked Dr. Neal about a EPK. Uh, he said, who does that? And I had to go back and look at his, his, uh, his visa. It's an EPK. It was just language. You know, at a different uh, a level that, you know, we have to be able uh, to work on 
and to have a clear understanding about who you are and what it is that uh, uh, we do. And uh, uh, Douglas, uh, the National African American Student Leadership Conference, uh, they called me in and we get there. And they didn't come pick us up. Rob and I had to get in the truck with chickens uh, uh, to get there. Uh, and I said, listen, when we're done, I'm out of here. They gave me $1,000 to be the keynote speaker because nobody showed up and uh, gave us $50,000 to bring in our toy. I just had to ask the question. No, just ask uh, the question. Uh, and now when Rob comes back uh, to town, they want to know what's the secret, how Rob became associate director of the Beacon Schools. What's the secret? No, and, and no, so no, that's what it is that I'm saying. It is at a very uh, uh, different level about how we walk, uh, how, how, how it is that uh, we move. So it's different, um, you know, and, you know, and like I said, so you had uh, Guillaume there. Uh, Y'all never asked him if he can bring your play to Princeton. You gotta ask. You know, so he brought, uh, uh, you know, he brought Robert uh, to Princeton. Robert uh, has been, uh, since our last Zoom, has been in, in uh, uh, five different places, $20,000, count as one. You know, and, you know, and then, you know, so that's what, uh, what it is that I'm saying, that uh, no one, uh, after the uh, nonprofit, it's the community scholars. And you got a five minute speech. And then you win $100,000. And it's called scalable. Uh, I can't do that. But then you can do a donors conference and get $50,000. You know, so it is at a different uh, level about what it is that uh, we need uh, 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 to do. So Rob is going to send you uh, his resume, Douglas. So you have a, a clear understanding about uh, he writes, he can bring in uh, guest speakers. You know, he can do uh, uh, a certain thing. So, so now let's go to uh, 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 Dr. Neil, who is uh, doing a whole bunch of uh, stuff. Dr. Neil, we welcome you. Dr. Neil? Oh, now I think uh, he's in DC. So, uh, you know, I have to be, uh, 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 Dr. Neil? Uh, I'm here, I'm just, I'm just, I'm here. No, 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 I, I said, uh, 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 that, uh and, and then, so Robert, um, uh, Robert, as, as yeah. you watch Douglas, a lot of those posters he put together, he won't say a thing. But, you know, so a lot of that stuff, you know that uh, he put the, uh, uh, together. So I think he knows, like uh, uh, Neil. Uh, he he knows uh, Omar. Uh, you know, and you know, and then just to know that you know a lot of us went to school together is um, just something uh, uh, totally uh, different. So uh, Rob, you know, when you come to town, um, you know, you got to figure out. Uh, 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 what's gonna happen? What you mean? Like, um, you know, you know. So, you know, uh, uh, I always say, Rob hasn't been here because of Elton John. That's my story. He ain't been here, you know. And you know, and 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 you know. So, uh, even when you come to uh, the town, like if Omar comes uh, to town, um, uh. He better not hit uh, Larry Larry's microphone. Oh, he can't just, oh, uh... well. No, 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 but I'm saying in performance. So I, I said to Neil, I said, I want to take you down to, um, you know, Maryland, you know, bus buzz and, and poet, so they can hear a, uh, a, a different thing. And like I said to uh, Omar, you can send uh, Jill Scott, Meek Mills, and, you know, uh, you know, Jack and Sullivan, and say, this is what it is I want you to do. Let them select. And then that would be, you know, their kind 
of uh, idea. So you can't send them. I said, you have to send them sheet music. You can't send them your rendition of a song. You know, and, and you know, no, so, so I, you know, you know, that's what it is I'm saying. You know, so uh, 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 the people uh, uh, who you know, uh, that's gonna be some uh, totally different. I, I know major figures. They got, they got like two. They got clean songs. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, and then you know, Larry Larry. Um, you know, uh, he is different. But Scooby D, who created Gangsta, do he apologize? Uh, he, he had to realize no cussing in here. You know, you know, and then so uh, Omar he required that like, you send him, you know, uh, your playlist and then what it is that uh, you want to do. So I mean, you have, who comes to an event and know what it is that they want to do? Mm. You, you know, so I think so. So now that uh, you know, I have got to uh, 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 look at it. You know, but I, I say I say you know, you know, you know, because I'm trying to do the timeline about you know where he's going to be to figure out. Uh, how we can fit in uh, our schedule? Um, you know, you know, just about uh, 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 you know, just saying so about how it is that uh, we move. So, uh, Dr. Neil, is it who's in DC? Um, Dr. Neil, and and, and yeah, then, yes, know, I'm sorry, I'm here, I'm sorry. You know, uh, so uh, uh, we want to ask you a question. What are you doing now? Why are you in DC? Oh, I'm not in DC. It got, the meeting was canceled. So yeah, I, hold I on. I, I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta get out. Okay. Uh, and 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 then you know, so uh, uh, what uh, it is that uh, we are saying. So uh, Dr. Neil, can, can I give you a history? Can I, can I give you a brief brief history? Can you get? Can you give it? You said. And, uh, I, I said. I said. So I think it was in uh, 2001. I went to the National African American Student Leadership Conf Conference in Holly Springs, uh, Mississippi. Uh, and then uh, they invited me back and gave me a budget. So Rob and I, we get to the airport and then they don't pick us up. Uh, so we had to get in the car in the chicken coop, chicken's flying all, all over our head. Uh, and I got there and uh, I said, I'm like, listen, when I'm done, uh, I'm going back to the airport. And I cussed them out. They said, Maurice, uh, 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 the keynote speaker is not here. We give you a thousand dollars if you would uh, be it. And I said, thousand dollars, and I could bring in my whole tour next year. Uh, and then uh, they agreed. Uh, so next year we come in with Kyle, Eric, uh, Kyle, Eric, Kyle, Kyle, Eric, Kyle, Eric, uh, and Kamika. Uh, and we saw the National Black Spoken Word Tour. You know, uh, on site, and we've been going back. You know, uh, you know, uh, back and forth. You know, and now that you know, I sit back and look at uh, what it is. You know how they have put certain things together, and how we need to uh, uh, organize in a very, very uh, uh, different way. You know, and you know, and, and my major thing. You no, know, I, I keep saying. Uh, you know, uh, whenever you talk to Dr. Neil, I gotta figure out what year it was. Cause you know, I'm not quite sure of, uh, you know, what year it was. I think I got a, I got something for Hasbro, uh, 2013. Um, so uh, how how do we know you? What year was it? You're asking me? When? I'm, I'm, I'm bad with these kinds of things. I, okay. I okay. mean, I, I remember where, I just don't know the year that it happened. It was, you know, um, early 2000. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. It was at the, um, uh, what's the gentleman that has the poetry, the bookstore and the poetry? Robbins. Yes. Yeah. He had one of those all day events. And that was the first time I ever went out to read. And that's where I met Maurice and company. Wait, wait, that was the first day? Excuse me? That's the first thing you ever read? That was the first day I ever read. And he came up after the first poem, 9-11, 24-7. And he took the mic out of my hand and said, you're done. And, but, uh, but wait a minute. That's the first day that you ever read? That's the first day I ever read. So I thought I was the worst thing since soggy bread. 
because uh, he came up on the stage and took the mic out of my hand. Uh, that was the first time you ever read, for real? Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, and I can't get you. Because um, uh, I, I didn't know what, what it was. Um, it, it, it was very, very, uh, very... Uh, uh, so, what made that be the first time that uh, you read? Um, I was pushed out of the nest, if you will, to not just write, but maybe I needed to go out and um, read my work. So um, that event came up, so I decided to, um, you know, throw my hat in and, and go to it. All that writing was giving him contractions and he needed to birth his voice. He needed to birth his voice. That's what it was. You, you know, and so, so let's see, you no, know, what I hear uh, uh, is that other people who were there, who uh, here he uh, I, I said, you know, glad to meet you. They may think that uh, I would call them, that I would do certain, uh, uh, a thing. And you know, so I, I did like I, I was at Larry's the last of them. Uh, and you know, a guy, he's like, Yeah, here you go uh, with the nonsense. I should cut your face. And I kept thinking, should I know him? Uh, and I have to be very clear, I think that a lot of people uh uh think that if I say uh uh, uh call me or I call you, uh they think that uh uh they're still waiting on the phone call. Well, you know. Sometimes you gotta call me, and it's at a different level, uh, you know. So if that's the history that uh, Dr. Neil says, okay, I receive that, um, uh, you know. And, and and then it's different because you know uh, some people are still going to uh, Larry Roberts after twenty years. That's a big difference, you know. Yeah. So you know, I I receive that, uh, and then you know, so. Uh, do you, uh, Dr. Neil, do you think that you are successful? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be successful. I think at the moment that you start thinking like that, you stop doing what it needs, what you need to do to be successful. Or I, I, I would like to also add to that. Um, everyone's success is, is defined by, by, by their own perspective. And if you're satisfied and complete ah. with the lane and the work you're doing, I, w I would say you're successful in that, right? And I would add to that, that for many of us, success is defined for us. And Absolutely. Once it's and once it's defined for us, it's then sold to us to buy. For instance, someone told me if I was to become a physician, that I would be somebody, I would be successful. So I spent the money to become a physician only to realize after 13 years of schooling that I went from nigga to Dr. Nigga. <laughs> so I bought somebody else's definition of what success is. And I think we need to uh, define for ourselves what success is. Yeah, and, and that's what I, I really specifically hit, up, hit on in my book, Seeking Opportunities to Win. Um, dispelling all those labels and, and those parameters that everybody else put upon you and find your own lane from within. Yes. You know, start looking outward for incomes and start looking inward for outcomes. Mm. You can understand who you are, what you are, and then allow and start to align everything outside of you, the people, places, and things accordingly into your, into your world to, to create a... Um, a perfect universe for you. Okay, all right. So listen, I have problems uh, uh, with that. And uh, just to say that uh, when they said I was a celebrity scholar, I asked what comes along with that. When they said I was an outstanding media personality, what comes along with that? When they said I was a cultural pop phenomenon, what comes along with that? So uh, you can name me, but something has to come along with that. And then, and then in our paradigm, uh, you know, we have to uh, look at it uh, 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 differently. Uh, Rob, I just, um, that just doesn't bode well uh, 
uh, with me, you know, and, and I, I'm only saying that, um, you know, to uh, when um, uh, Dr. Neil, when he goes international um, and he does outside events, uh, that was my choice not uh, to do that. Uh, you know, and then, you know, it is just a different thing. So Dr. Neil said uh, he likes to just do a performance, uh, no interruptions, no panel. And then, uh, then it is a different kind of level. Uh, for me, you all tell me what it is that you want me to do. Open up the door and then I can bring my team in. I will follow your instructions, any, any, anything that it is that uh, uh, you say. Uh, and, you know, just for me, um, uh, you know, talking to Omar, uh, being able to call Princeton, uh, and, you know, being able to talk to, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Neil, um, who, who is at a very, very uh, different level. And it's stunning. Uh, it's, it, it happens suddenly. And that's the only thing that um, I'm used to, top-notch talent. Um, uh, and then, you know, so when they call me and ask me, who you got? I just say, uh, uh, Dr. Neil. And now when they ask me about this uh, uh, and that, and, you know, and going on tour, uh, I have to be able to uh, understand uh, electronic press kit. And uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Dr. Neil, and it didn't go well. So I went online. <laughs> no, no but dude, I went online, and I found it. Uh, real quick, it's better than an electronic uh, uh, press kit. But when they ask me about uh, things, now I know that we have it. But I got to use him as an, an example, uh, you know. Uh, and then, you know, so for me, and so about this is the conversation. Uh, when people call me, they say, um, uh, Maurice, uh, uh, do you know anything about this? I can, I can never say, uh, well, look me up online. My response will be uh, probably, you know, within uh, 24 uh, hours. Uh, and I just say that uh, when they ask me uh, uh, how many workshops could I teach, and it got down to 24, I never even uh, uh, knew that. Uh, and, you know, when Dr. Neil says that uh, his, his book is, is offered in courses, I want to know, does you know uh, how many courses is offered? In? You're asking me that question? Yeah. Do you know how many courses is offered? In? No, I do not. Uh, uh, and then he didn't ask for it. Uh, it's uh, done. And I, I know that working with uh, shares, I, I got a lot of um, book orders. So I went online and I checked out the departments. Ten different departments. Ten different uh, department. And so when you do your ISBN and uh, your SAM, you can uh, decide, you know, what departments that it can uh, be a part of. Uh, you know, so I'm learning uh, a lot of things, you know, you know, just in uh, 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 tradition. Uh, and, you know, so I said, I said, listen, um, I want to do the National Black Theater Festival and I want to have a, a, a spoken word uh, you know, a poet uh, thing. Uh, so, but I want to introduce um, uh, Dr. Neil uh, to see if he can do like a one-person show and, and whatever that would look like. You know, and then, you know, so I have uh, uh, the privy uh, to send him uh, different uh, things. So uh, they said that they may be up to it, but I sent him uh, the resume. Uh, I sent him the EPK. Didn't know, uh, you know. So that's what I'm saying. It is just a type of of uh, opportunity that uh, I am, am am looking at. So Rob, this is what I'm gonna do. Watch Neil read and let's categorize. Uh, let's categorize it. Uh, uh, Dr. Neil. Yes. What do you have? Hold on. Okay. So uh uh. Uh, uh, do you? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Neil, it looks it looks like you in a slave chamber. We're all in a slave chamber. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
Say that again. <laughs> we all are in a slave chamber. We're not out yet. These are so, different compartments. <laughs> right. I'm I'm at home still. Mm. Wow. So okay. You get that, huh? Appalling silence. It is not the night, but the absence of light. It is not the sweltering fervor of the desert, but the rainfall that fails to fall. It is not humanity that loses its humanity, taking, denying humanity from its fellow man, but humanity that fails to find its humanity. Fighting back, to give back, to grant back, humanity seen, taken, denied its fellow man. It is not the strident clamor, nor the vitriolic voices of the bad people, but the appalling silence of those who claim to be the good people. It is not the night, but the absence of light that keeps us in the dark. And in that darkness, we must remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. clean from its purpose. It is not that we love truth less, but that we love living the lie more. Under the pretense of perfection constantly in the making, we the people in order to appear to be constantly forming a more perfect union, falsely pretend and profess to establish justice ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty and that all men abide by these deeds except those we the people. Tis but marrow from feigned feeble tongues. There is but one mind in all these we the people and it is bent men construing things after their own fashion, clean from the purpose of the thing itself. Tis but common proof of lowliness. Colorable, they say, there is no black America, no white America, no Latino America, no Asian America. There are but these bent states united in a we the people America. More narrow from feigned, feeble tongues of what they say and not what they do when they do what they do. We, the people, point a finger on the water's surface and call it the moon clean from the purpose of the thing itself. America was built on fear, not on courage, not on imagination, not on an unbeatable determination to not point its finger on the water's surface and call it the moon clean from the purpose of this thing itself. Let us start with what America calls the truth to now call it a lie. We yeah. the people in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty. Shrunken from these measures, it is not that we love truth less, but that we love living this lie more. Uh, uh, Rob, Rob, so yeah. I want you to, uh, to understand this. Uh, what I see, uh, what I've learned is that, you know, as he is talking, Maurice? Suppose, um, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> uh, so when Neil's talking, you can roll all the black colleges background behind them and then change his shirt and put in the black colleges. We can but, hear you, um, Maurice. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. Okay. 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 But then also uh, put in, you know, some of the words. So when Sherazade was on, on, on tour, uh, we took all the tapes from the talk shows. We changed her background and change her clothes. Uh, and then, you know, that is something totally uh, different. Uh, and then um, if you look at some of the back houses, 
uh, elders and scholars, you know, some of their words uh, uh, appear there. Uh, but then, you know, and it was just, um, yeah. Um, Marie. All right, all right, okay, all right, Daphne, go ahead, go ahead. You're, you're breaking my flow. Go ahead. Okay. There's something that I thought about when I read the word syntax, that arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. And what I thought about was well-formed for whom and for what purpose? Democratic syntax, the syntax of democratic terrorists, sinister semantics attacking in a dialect cloaked and a phonology of peace and equality. Unsuspecting made in the USA linguistic line mind lies deceit. IED play on word play, berry skin surface deep and doubled speech, double dealing words, words, double duty, working, deceiving, disarming, misleading, indoctrinating, detonating, word forms cloaked in a phonology of peace and equality. Founding fathers forked tongue etched in the etymology of their linguistic mind control, their reformation of word forms, their double meanings to double cross meaning, their recontextualization of the content and context of persons, places, and things to conceal their who, what, and where behind their wrong done everywhere. Honed, homegrown, babbling Babylons, clone drums, flown aerial search, and destroy plagues on color-coded word plays of terror, deployed the narrow path freedom marches to freedom. Democratic Double dealers dealing from the bottom of stacked decks, action words that have no action, plotting men of quilled pens, a ploy, pinning homonyms to represent mm. persons, places, and things to hide who, what, and where behind their wrongs done everywhere. A syntax of tactical democratic 1776 semantics, cloak and dagger, Jeffersonian greed extremists, fundamentalists, terrorists, detonating dialect cloaked mm -hmm. in a phonology of declared peace and equality. Mm -hmm. There's something that Martin Luther King said that really stayed with me. And I went back to remind myself of something that he said. He said, all we say to America is to be true to what you said on paper. Because he said, somewhere I read, you said all men, not just white men, were created equal with inalienable rights. Somewhere he said, I read, you said three fifths did not exist anymore with your abolishment of slavery somewhere I read you said we had to measure right against unreasonable searches and seizures somewhere I read you said we had a right to a fair trial by a jury of our peers and that we were innocent until proven guilty not by our absence of whiteness somewhere I read you said there would be no gerrymandering no color coded poll taxes to undermine one man, one vote of every black man somewhere. I read you said on your parchment, on papyrus, on your letterhead paper, we hold these truths to be self-evident. And now is their necessity. And all we said to democracy was somewhere be true to what you said on paper because he said there'll be difficult days that lie ahead. Mm. But it really didn't matter with him. He had been to the mountaintop. He said he did not mind like anybody. He wanted to live a long life. Longevity had its place. But he was not concerned about that. 
that he just wanted to do his God's will and that his God had allowed him to go to the mountaintop and that he had looked over and he had seen the promised land. He said that he may not get there with you, but he wanted you, the black man, the white man, the Jew, the Muslim and Gentile to know that we as a people would get to the promised land. He said he was happy. He was not worried about anything. He was not fearing any man. His eyes had seen the glory of the coming of his Lord. And when he said the urgency of now is now an angry scowl did plow democracy's blow a lean and hungered look and stared it upon the king with ungentle eyes. It was one shot. They shot him, dropped him there on that spot where he said, we've got some difficult days that lie ahead. And today, all we can say to democracy is somehow, somewhere, be true to what you said on paper. He said, he said, I was in Germany reading and a lady in the audience at the end said to me that it takes time for change. Tied to time, tied to time. She said change is tied to time and takes time and thus it takes time for us to change. But the oppressed asked who is us and whom among us tied change to time, why does it take time and whose time? Who is the one taking time, needed time to take their time to change? The clock has been ticking since 1776. Whose watch do we watch when we are not the watch nor the watcher of the watch? Whose watch do we watch to keep the time we keep kept this side of tyranny? Who gets to be the timekeeper? taking their time, watching time to say now is the time to say now is the time to make real the promises of freedom and democracy tied to time, tied to watches and watches of watches that are not mine that tie change to time. And I wanted to say something about critical race theory. Intellectually, Morally, legally, scholarly, you self-servingly get and teach critical Italian, critical Irish theory. You get and teach critical Jewish, Armenian, Polish, French, English theory. You get critical poor white and white female theory set in play against you to create and maintain ill-gotten institutionalized social, political, and economic inequalities against you. But you just can't get your arms around critical race theory because your hands are all over it. Mm. When it's what you've done and not what was done to you, you don't want to get, teach, talk about what you've done and how you are still tied to ill-gotten social and economic spoils of what you've done and continue to do. Critical race theory, you can't get your arms around it because your hands are all over it. Many times when I was traveling in Europe, the question would come up, here and there, you tell us what it's like being black in America. What is it like being black outside of, Amer out of, mm. outside of America? And I remember something that James Baldwin said. James Baldwin's nothing. Mm. He said he was not French in France. He simply did not exist. He was invisible, a relative reprieve and it was what he needed. Here beyond the borders of America, I am a James Baldwin nothing. 
and then visibility faring me far better than my visibility in those states united against me to label me to identify me as their nigger. Here I am a James Baldwin nothing, an obligatory nothing, categorically dismissed, not enough of something to even bother with despising. Here I am a James Baldwin nothing, but there is some solace, but nothing like real solace where there is some peace, but nothing like real peace, where there is some dignity, but nothing like real dignity, where there is some freedom, but nothing like real freedom. I am that James Baldwin nothing. That's something more than, that's something far bigger than America's nigger. I am a James Baldwin nigger. And I learned from a, a, a black father on the stage, talking to us with his kids. And in essence, what he said is if America gives you something, well, what he said, if the white man gives you something, in essence, give it back. Mm. Because it's not what is needed to save you. And so I say this about the boat, casting. The fathers of my father, did not sacrifice nor die that I may gain the right to cast my one vote for the lesser of two evils. For the lesser of two evils is still evil. Yet the black man, all men are indoctrinated with the lesser standard of casting their one precious vote for the lesser of two evils as if casting itself under any circumstance is far more precious than the right, the obligation to not cast one sacred vote for any greater or lesser portion of evil. And the weight we carry as black people in this country, the weight of just black. It is not the weight of black, but the immensity of being made to be just black every time white confronts me. It's the weight of white derivation of black, a derivative definition of just black derived in part by the social conditions created in large part by whites. It is the stress and strain of an inexact, inaccurate depiction to foster an ill-conceived, preconceived description of an ill-meaning distinction of black nature, black imagery, black sounds, the scope of black, derivatives of black derived, reconstituted meaning by white society, society to be just black. It is the immensity of immediate suspicion the first sight of me through aqua blue seas of constricting pupils, narrowing their circular misgivings like a hangman's rope hung tightly around my black throat. It is the weight and torque and tension of muscles and tendons, poised white flight, a fright, posture to iPhone militarized police who serve and protect white and red line, black free zones. It is the weighted density and white tone when switching from speaking to a white to just a black. It is the lift of an entitled nose, the flaring of nostrils, a glaring view through a narrowed view through slits and mistrusting eyelids. It is the enormous weight of hate when they clutch their loosely held Gucci handbags, the first side of me, the locking of the car doors, the first side of me, the collecting of the brew, frolicking in the aisles of department stores, the first side of me, the gravity of familiarity referring to me, renaming me, what's up, my man? The first, they lay eyes on me. It is the insanity of in and nigger black, subhuman black, green light black to shoot blacks in the back, concealing it, tracing the slain outlines of black and crime scene tape of plausible alibis and deniabilities, concealing falling shadows of black and lines that divide separate white society, society from just 
black, waited to be just black. A derivative of me derived reconstituting me by white society to be just black. Thirteen years of education after high school. Again, one of those things that I believe is overrated that they give us and teach us that we need. And it's education. Education is important, but it is not the end point. It is not the point of success. And I found that out the hard way. Dr. Nigger. And Dr. Nigger, can you cure me without touching me with nigger hands? Can you save my life without changing my life? Can you dance soft shoe while humming those Negro tunes when my white life codes blue? Can you reach inside yourself beyond the shit we put in you? Past painful moments we put in you, past despair and hopelessness we put in you and find that old black magic and save my life without changing all the shit we put in you. And Dr. Nigger, can you breathe in me air free of nigger from a nigger not free enough to breathe in free air? And can you stay on that colored side of the colored line and reach across your woes without touching me with those nigger hands to restart my blue heart without changing my cold blooded heart? Can you reach past the life we've taken from you and save my life without letting the white life pass me by? Can you, Dr. Nigger, be bigger for just one minute, in it for more than just a minute to save my life without taking my life? Can you cure me without touching me with those nigga hands? Can you dance soft shoe while humming those Negro tunes while you save my life without changing my life when my cold light, white light codes blue? While in Europe, I had a chance, it's Germany specifically, I had a chance to visit Dachau concentration camp in Dachau, Germany. And as I walked through, although there was much empathy and sympathy for the, my Jewish brothers and sisters, it gave me a revelation. Dachau, USA. I lit a candle in St. Jacob's Church asking, how can we say Dachau, Germany? and not say Auschwitz, Mississippi, Treblinka, Alabama, Allendorf, Georgia, Marfa, a forged in America Holocaust of Dusseldorf at every port, port, six times the number six million. At last count, truth be told the toll, at last count, how can we not say Dachau, USA, in the backdrop of holy scriptures, hymns, praise the prayed rape of black women and masses, merciless, lustful whims, a rapist, raping the breed slaves to rape the claim birthright, the babies as property for labor and trade in the marketplace of slaves set in the backdrop of holy scriptures, and hymns, how can we not say Dachau, USA? When they severed black men from their manhood to shove it down their throats, ripped black backs wide open, whipped, barred, hung by the neck, set ablaze, the charred remains left to rot down, not be cut down from America's concentration camp. How can we not say? When they yanked an incisor from inside his mouth to mark a slave a runaway, should a slave dare one day run away? How can we not say? When reverberating cries from crackling, fried, fat, bat, gripped the barren, bound, blistered backs of black slaves resonate still today. How when like Roman centurions, they knifed open the left sides of slaves to lay bare the cage rib to hook and hang slaves 
from their rib cage. How can we not say when they weighted the faces of slaves in suffocating iron masks, sequenced and spiked metal neck collars chained to excruciating thumb screws to painfully screw the tortured thumbs of slaves. How with the cutting off of toe, cutting off of feet, severing of ankles, cutting off of leg when caught running off America's extermination camps. How can we not say Dachau, USA? Maternity's largest killing fields of Washington and his sons, Jefferson and his sons pretending no memory of what they've done, no memory of what they do. Dachau, USA, killing fields of Jackson and his son still without end pretending no memory when others solemnly pledge, let us not forget. So I lit a candle in a church in Dachau, Germany, of 36 million at last count who lie dead or dying in America's labor camp. America pretends it has no memory. The truth told the toll, the full extent, those atrocities never to be told. How can we not say? Auschwitz, Mississippi. Treblinka, Alabama. Allendorf, Georgia. How can we not say? Dachau, USA. I have one more, but I can stop here if you like. Marie. Stop, uh, stop no. Yes. Um, my God. My God. Um, let, let, if you don't mind, can I just do my favorite? Okay, my okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I just... Go ahead. Uh, my name came about as I was, I'm very careful about labels in large part because you can become confined, restrained by that label um, internally and externally. But then I thought, under what condition would a name be important? My name. I have pledged allegiance to a fully masked, half placid flag. And to a republic which stands not, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have prayed your Lord's prayer to your God made in your image to deliver me from your evils. But hollow be his name, no will for black prayers to be done on this earth, nor as it is in his gated heaven. I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. After all my toils, frets, and fears, suffered two scores and 17 years, all my blood, sweat, and tears poured into every valley you've forsaken me in. I've sung my country to thee. When you said sing, I have at your twilight's last gleaming held your broad stripes and bright stars waving over land you proclaim to be free and home of the brave, not yet brave enough to let all men be free. I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. I believe your claim that Columbus with certain navigational precision sailed west to find India sitting in the east and discovered a continent not lost nor looking to be found, inhabited by men, not lost, nor looking to be found. And he renamed them a new name other than their own name. I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Because if freedom comes a calling and I have no name to be called, how will I be free? Leave me my name. I believed you when you proclaimed Jefferson professed with loving tenderness that her rate, slave rate, plantation rate, socioeconomic rate was consensual. I believe you lied that Washington never told a lie, that it was a civil war fought 
by civil men, the free uncivilized slaves that Lincoln without fraught presided over so that this nation could claim yet a second new birth of freedom, a second new claim to be a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. To these yet unfinished and abandoned words and words, I have given you my soul. Lead me my name. Because when freedom comes a calling, and I have no name to be called. How will I be freed? I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Uh, uh, Dr. Neal. Thank you all for your patience. Uh, Dr. Neal, uh, I'm gonna have Penn uh, post this. This is the anniversary of the boys. But, uh, Pray tell. Uh, my thought is um, the rotunda, I'm trying to have them screen you and put it up all around so people uh, can uh, 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 see it. Uh, you're doing too much now. Um, Cause dude, this is like, um, this is like a uh, one night only, a one night stand. Um, 40 days in um, 40 nights, 40 acres uh, in uh, the mural. Uh, and um, so, you know, uh, a lot of places, uh, they have chambers and it's humidified. Uh, I know that in the basement of the rotunda, uh, it's humidified. I know that when I went to the Holocaust Museum, I, I never made it through. Um, I couldn't do it because of the words and, and the sounds. Um, uh, and if Harrisburg brings you, um, they actually take our uh, slave things. Uh, uh, and, you know, so when you say certain things, people can, uh, can get it. Uh, you know, and then, you know, you know, or they can see the pictures. Uh, but uh, they have never seen a people with their apparatus. Uh, live, uh, but you know they hear your words, um, uh, and you know, uh, you know, just if if they, but then I want it to go around the uh, rotunda, and I want to see what language uh, is in, um, you know, for closed caption. But uh, I tell you, uh, the rotunda is uh, tall. Uh, I'm willing to take all those shouts and be on that roof so people can actually see uh, what it is that uh, you are, are, uh, are saying. Uh, and dude, it is really, really, uh, really uh, uh, important. And I kept saying, if you get 15 different screens and they hear you, uh, you asked for but to come back tomorrow, you know, and then you know. So I'm I'm gonna have uh, uh, the rotunda uh, posters, uh, and I said to uh, Bob, uh, nigga, you on the uh, Elton John tour? Uh, I need Elton John to see uh, this here uh, uh, thing that uh, it is. Um, you do. It's called Father. Uh, it's called uh, Propaganda is Changing Your Mind. It's called La CM, uh, The Clarion Call. Uh, what's it called? Um, Parking. Uh, and, you know, so, dude, it's um, white, folk, white folks call it iambic pentameter, or we call it uh, pigskin. Uh, um, uh, wow. Uh, and, dude, it's like, um, you look, you look like uh, you in a, um, damn, what's going on? Neil? Yes. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a- but, but let me say, this is not me. What did you say? This is not me, this is us. 
Okay. I, I went to a, a uh, artist residency um, a few years back and uh, you know they invited some poets and then they had this grand master poet, whoever she was there for us if we wanted to talk about our work and have her review it and stuff like that. And um, I heard her tell another poet, she said, you need to go back and stick your hand deeper into that bucket of pain because it's not reflected in the writing. And I internalized that, you know, that bucket is our pain. It's our pain. Um, it is our pain that created words, thoughts, and words in my head that were transcribed to paper. So, you know, it's it's not just me; it is us. Um, and um, I, I just want us to feel us. Uh, and you know, and you know, so. Uh, you know, they had this thing about the uh, VFW uh, tour. Uh, uh, that's a one man show, Nikki. That's a one man show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, and then. Um, um, no, it's, it's, I, it's not about me and it's not about a show. It's, it's, it's about it's expressing our pain, the wrongs, where we are. Uh, Allowing and, our words to communicate a vision seen. Yeah. Um, all, right, all right, so, so Rob, I want you to hear this. Um, this is my uh, idea that um, we take uh, your Elton John uh, symbol, uh, put it on one side of the flag, and we put so on the other side of the flag and hoist that up around Penn, make them pay for it. Uh, uh, and then, you know, see if um, John is interested in that. Then uh, uh, I want to see, if, you know, if you can take um, take that new words, have five screens around uh, the return around it. Uh, and then, so he says something and you brief it, but it goes continually. Um, and you know, so uh, uh, the uh, uh, the niggas don't know you ain't gonna so shit until you go into the basement and see all of the, rel the relics of slavery. You don't want to see that. Uh, and I saw that in Harrisburg, and when I go to the Black Holocaust, I man, I can't make it through. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Out of, uh, it's a journey. It's definitely a journey. You know, and then so it's. Uh, Humidified, and uh, Sarah Dye said she said uh, Maurice went to the boxing collection, and they closed the door, and the books moved, and she left uh, the room. But uh, where it is the rock? Uh, I said, you know, imagine if they have the uh, uh, the relics of all the, uh, the slave tools, and. Um, well, let's 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 um yeah, I think that that's something we can we can sit down and talk no, no, about. No, okay, but then just... uh, okay, but then also I want to uh, post this on the Rotunda site because they just closed down the the voice uh, kind of so the black folks uh, kind of attempt. So I'm gonna have them post this. Um, All right. Well, let's, no. let's 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 you know let's 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 put it together so we can present. No, it. no, no, no. I'm I'm going to uh, to do that. Uh, uh, real quick, so that it could be done. But that's what it is. That I'm saying. So now uh, I can ask, you know, Elton John uh, 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 for money, and you know, you know, you know. So, so Penn also has uh, wow. money. You know, so I can move uh, real quick. But this, shit, um, you know, and it is very uh, different uh, to be in a learned uh, society. Uh, so, dude, you gotta look at uh, um, what Dina says about the uh, uh, rotunda. Yeah, I'll definitely look at that. But uh, yeah, I got um, I got another. Okay. 
All right, all right, all right, go ahead. So I'm, 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 I, I just want to talk to, to Neil and yeah, talk to the attorney. Mm. All right, Dr. Nils, as always, it's always an honor. Mine is mine. Thank you, work. thank you. I appreciate your voice. Thank you for your patience and listening. I do appreciate it very much. And your kind words. Thank you. Well deserved. All right, you guys have a good night. Hey, uh, uh, Dr. Neil, are you in a dungeon? Where are you? I mean, my, it's, I have bedroom doors and I put these doors up. See. And I like this kind of motif. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, no, I'm not in the dungeon. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, do, um, um, wow. All right. Yeah. So, I'm going to, um, you don't know uh, where you went uh, today. You don't know where I went today. You don't know where you went today. I, I don't understand. Uh, so, um, you mean literally or? Yeah, yeah, no, you know, just in, uh, dude, you were looking different ways. Stunning. So, wow. uh, uh, I, I want to have Gina fix this, uh, and I'm going to send this to uh, the Du Bois house, and I want them to play it. Stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, no. As I said, you know, my, my heroes are you know, Malcolm X, uh, Martin, and Gandhi, uh, and you and Lois have been very instrumental in pointing me in the direction um, from a presenting standpoint. Uh, which, you know, I have internalized and will forever internalized. And Michael Jackson said that um, an artist should live inside his work as much as his work lives inside him. And so the goal is to have your artistry and the artist merge into one. And I think that's why he was so powerful and believable because his artistry and he as the artist merged as one. And, and so that's what I, I struggle to become, to be in, in my work. Mm. Um. 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 Oh, God. Uh. Uh, yeah. It was this, um, yeah, I'm gonna have Penn post this. Um, you know, uh, Des, uh, 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 this needs to be shown on Juneteenth. I'm gonna see if I can uh, offer this as a broadcast for Juneteenth. Wow. Memorial Day, yeah, this is um, All right, so uh, I wanna cry. This is just. Um, <laughs> Don't cry. Uh, no, 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 no. And then, um, so, so, um, till I was just, uh, you know, uh, it was just, uh, 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 remarkable about how, uh, uh, how this, you know, and, um, I, you know, I call this, um, you know, I believe in God. So, uh, uh, some, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, when you read, uh, God tells me, I want you to stay. Uh, most of the time, I, I can't make it through. Um, uh, you know, and uh, I was watching you. Um, and dude, you was uh, uh, staying uh, uh, in moments like, like black folks uh, supposed to believe that this is their life. That's uncomfortable. That that this is uh, their life. Uh, yeah, Mass Cor is to uh, depend yeah. on the science. Corn Cornell West says, in using what he calls um, paideia, uh, to have, to invoke internal and external critical analysis of yourself internally and the world around you, that transforms you. And it makes, puts you in the position that when you speak 
And when you do, you make people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Change is about making people feel uncomfortable, not making them feel comfortable. Change come about when people are uncomfortable or have far too much pain that they can't take it anymore. And then they react. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, uh -huh. as Black people today, do not have enough pain in our lives. We live too comfortably. And we're slowing down the uh, exodus to the promised land. Oh, so, so listen, so have you been to the Martin Luther King Monument? No, I have. Oh, in uh, DC? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Some years ago, I was there. So we didn't ask uh, in, uh, anybody for money. We raised the money. Uh, and then um, when I looked at it, um, uh, uh, I shook the Black Wax, Wax Museum. I couldn't make it through. The what museum? The Black Wax Museum. Okay. Is that? And, and, uh, the Black Sorry. Wax Museum. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, please consider uh, doing uh, uh, a video of you reading on site at the King Monument, the Wax Museum, and uh, uh, the Slavery Museum. Uh, yeah. I don't no. know if they allow me to do that, but you know. um, no, uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm saying, well, uh, I know, you know, well, the Slave Museum, that's here in Philly. I know the, uh, the, uh, the monument, uh, uh, you know, that would be, uh, cool. Uh, you know, no, so I, no, I, like, I can just, um, make a phone calls, but now have, have, have you been to the, uh, uh, uh the Black Museum? Black, and, what, Black what museum? Uh, National Black Museum in, um, in um dc and it's the museum of what uh the national black history museum okay i don't believe in black history museum i think they are misnamed none of this is my history what we call black history is really the history of white people what it is to me is the black experience under white history. So I think all those buildings should be renamed to the Museum of White History or the Museum of the Black Experience under white history. That is not my history. That is white history. And then, so what's black history? Uh, the X in Malcolm X. Um, we, don't, uh, we, we don't know our history. You tell me what country you came from. Tell me the name of your father's father's father. Tell me what language they spoke. Tell me what was the religion then. Tell me the customs then of the village. Tell me what river your village was near. We don't have a history. What we have is a black experience. I uh, will not claim that as my history. That's white people's history. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna follow you, but, but then uh, also with uh, Dr. Lenny Jeffers, uh, Jeffy said, he said, wherever you go, uh, take it all back. Uh, and so I hear what you're saying about the customs, the language, um, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, uh, I, uh, 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got you know because that's one thing that I've been working on. Um, that's that's what I'm supposed uh, uh, supposed to be doing uh, in um, Panama. I'm supposed Ooh. to take uh, um, so every object, the whole building. I'm gonna take it all back. Ooh. The streets, the names, the chairs, the the lights, everything going back. Everything, uh, and that's all uh, back to black. Uh, uh, everything. Um, you know, so, you know, you know, so, so, uh, 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 I got you, um, but, uh, I'm, you know, uh, some of the things, you know, uh, you know, about, the, about the, uh, museum, Dr. Umar Johnson, he said, he said it's more thing in the museum about Beyonce than anybody else. <laughs> and he, he said, this is a Beyonce, um, museum, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, and then, you know, uh, you know, it is, uh, 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 you know, so even when I, uh, 
no, I, and I went to the uh, the King Museum, uh, and um, I, I went to the King Monument, and it was just so uh, stunning. Yeah, uh, it was like uh, he was there. Yeah, um, it's a it's an impressive thing. Um, but uh, 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 but but then you know, and I was like, you know, we got to leave this land better than how we uh, 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 found it. Uh, you know, and then you know, you are. Uh, you know, I, I kept saying, um, if I can get somebody to sign and sign language, um, what it is that uh, you do. Uh, and like I said, you know, up in New York, when uh, I uh, 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 when uh, I was uh, I was performing, and uh, 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 somebody said, uh, uh, "Oh my God." She just signed, he did. Oh, give me a break. Um, you, you know, and they do it is just um, you know, uh, important. Um uh, yeah. Um uh my guy. Um you know, and, and you know, that's what I was saying to uh, Rob. Uh how is you got uh Elton John? He, he featured you on his tour. And we get no money from it. You know, you know and then so it is just so um uh uh uh, uh different. Uh so I, last time you was on, on, on the Zoom, uh they brought a person to our uh, Princeton uh chain. So now I gotta ask. Uh because you know they they don't know if you will come, you know, uh what it is that uh you will uh do. Who is this? A Princeton. Princeton, New Jersey? Princeton. No, no, but Princeton uh, University. So we had Howard on, uh, Lincoln on, Cheney on, uh, and Princeton uh, you know, University. And I said to us, uh, uh, I said to adults, uh, you're asking for the South to give you a money. Uh, bring Dr. Neal in, uh, and then the honorarium will go to your organization. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't want any money. I just give it. To yeah, no, no, but then, no, so, so that's what I'm saying. But then, I'm saying that you ask, uh, you ask, you, I tell you, you act like uh, uh, Dr. Neil is uh, not, you know, available. I, I said, but then, if you don't ask for certain things, it's going to be very, very uh, uh, different. They don't have a lot of uh, black studies program ever mm. so. You, you know, so, so I'm saying, you know, uh, uh, even if, if to everybody now who takes uh, education has got a mind in American studies. Mm. No, um, uh, no, but, but I'm saying, dude, he wants like a block. Uh, he wants this. Uh, he wants uh, 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 that, you know, so it's at a, uh, at a different, um, no, you know, so, you know, dude, it's, it's my job you know, to make phone calls, but uh, the boys, Hey, brother, watch out, man. Uh, you know, dude, bro, I saw this thing um, about uh, what it was that you were saying, and I, I watch you look, um, and you gave us a, a, a several lives uh, that people hope that uh, they can't remember. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, and, and, no, and then. Uh, yeah, dude, it was just uh, 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 remarkable. Well, but, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. You know, and, and the, dude, they have to, um, you know, I kept saying, why are you in the basement? Um, and, you know, they would send me pictures of Harrisburg. And, and, and uh, I remember I was uh, going to speak, and they had, like, uh, uh, the masks, the whips. I said, uh, y'all got to remove that before I come on stage. I can't just um, you know, I just can't um, uh, and uh, I so I'm just trying to imagine if they put that mask on you and and put them spikes in your mouth. <laughs> what you mean while reading? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. But um, uh, you know, but then you know, like uh, you know, and then uh, uh. 
you know, I do. I, so, so that's what I was saying. Um, if I would venture to, uh, you know, do so, like, uh, you know, they would come in and and see, you know, you know the uh, the equipment, and you would take them through a tour of you reading, and then when they come up, come out, I'm on the roof with that shit all around me. for three hours. I'm gonna be there. I ain't got no name. <laughs> okay, I ain't got no damn name. You know, yeah, so it is this um Listen. Sorry, I'm my God. Well, thank you. Uh, as I said, the the people I have to um, thank for anything that anybody thinks I'm doing well, you know, it's 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 you, Blondie and um Lois, uh, because when I watch you two uh, go, you know, you set, you guys set the bar for me. And I have never seen anybody do what you and Lois did and do. Uh, uh. But uh, uh, I, I, uh, I have a, a backdrop of your uh, first uh, performance uh, at Paul Wilkes' house. And the guy passed out. He went on out. Um, you know, so so I've seen you do a a a a, a live thing. You know, and I kept saying when you did uh, uh, the thing at the convention, uh, I had to go to the back of the room, <laughs> and and I said, "Where he get this from? Where he get this from?" Uh, you know, and I said, I said, wow. Um, I said, dude, I am just. Uh, I got it from you and Lois. Yeah, and, and so sometimes uh, it comes, it happens uh, uh, in the room, and I call the hot close, just next to us. Uh, you know, and um, and you know, so uh, when you said that was your uh, uh, first time on reading. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and. Uh, you know, uh, I was like, look, um, I was like saying, um, uh, should I uh, uh, talk to him? I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's damn quite uh, uh, interesting. Uh, you know, and then, uh, but Lang broke down. Dude, uh, if you see the book, it's very... Uh, uh, how he broke down the different sections, uh, the, uh, the different things uh, that uh, uh, I said. Dude, it was very, it, dude, it was very um, uh, respectful. It was um, uh, honorable, uh, and you know, and I, and I keep saying, dude, uh, uh, he uh, he stopped you, and that was okay. But then uh, uh, you could have said. Hey, I'm done. I'm going on tour. There it is. <laughs> you, you know, and then no, and, and so 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 that's what I'm saying, man. man um, when you said that was your first time reading, um, I tell people, don't try this at home. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> you, you know, you know. So, so, stop, man. stop, stop. No, no, no. So, 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 Neil, you know, I'm saying, uh, Neil, I'm, I'm really, really, uh, 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 serious about, you know. How you uh, walk into a, a, a room uh, and do the older folks would love you because um, they can um, get it. You know, at a, so do it's classical. Thank you, thank you. It is just do it is just um uh 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 you know uh you know uh, carry your uh, mTOR. Pro bono, uh, you know, uh, do, uh, in absentia, to it is all of those uh, things. It's a, it's a license. Mm, thank you. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, it is. Uh, yeah, I just want to get in front of some a few HBCUs. Okay, and, okay. and, and um, but then so uh, this is what I am. Um, I'm trying to uh, uh, 
figure uh, it out. So typically what I do, I, I email, I fax, and I mail. So, so everybody can um, uh, uh, get it. And so I'm, do I have to look back? Because I think the lady who started bringing all the, all the black colleges, uh, she starts doing certain things uh, at Penn. So do I got to look at the, um, uh, the history. Oh, shit. Anybody that came from black houses that went to Penn, damn. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, I can um, uh, yeah, I can uh, 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 uh do that. But then now the whole thing is that um, okay. So uh, I, I, I gotta tell you the truth. Uh, so a lot of the colleges they only order from speakers bureaus. I see. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, you know, yeah, but I will um I'll I'll look at it because now you know I got a a different kind of of chart. So um Dr. Miller, thank you. Thank you. Film okay. documentary. <laughs> yeah, okay. One a uh, one uh one night stand. Yeah, I love that. All right, bro. Okay, my friend. Thank you so much. Okay, Maurice, how do you want, um, for this recording, how do you want it uh, cut, you know? Uh, uh, let Gina uh, do that. So, so listen, so, uh, what's, what's your background? My background? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I went to uh, school in Connecticut, to Wesleyan University. I grew up in uh, Maine. Oh. And, uh, I studied, I, I studied, uh, Music. That's how I came to event production. Um, you, you, uh, you know, through college, I worked all doing um, uh, live sound and like front of house concert. Oh, work. okay. So, so you have like a liberal arts degree? I have a liberal arts degree. Yes. Uh, but then, uh, what was your minor concentration? Sorry, say that again. I said, what was your minor concentration? Oh, we didn't have that sort of thing. Um, but if if there was to be that sort of thing, I guess it would have been it would have been education. Um. So uh, you know, so now uh, so okay is uh light and uh and sound, you, you know, because like uh, I was saying, if we go inside the uh the rotunda, just go to dark, and just have the panels. Of uh, you know of of his work, um, and so do you know anything about slavery? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, you know, so uh, what it was that I was saying that I went to a place and they had like all the relics, the real relics of of uh, slavery, um, mouth things, um, uh, things that they used to do to us. Yeah, uh, I said, and I saw it. Uh, I said, God. So I said, you know, you know, just imagine if f- folks come in and see it uh, on the table and it disappears. And I'm up on the roof with it all on for three hours. Uh-huh. That would be something totally uh, uh, different. You know, so the, the Rotunda has a lot of different uh, uses inside. Yes. Now, I don't know what's in the basement. Um, uh, How much aside from the bathrooms, honestly? No, uh, on the other side. Oh, on the basement of the uh, of the sanctuary? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the atrium. Oh, yeah, there's there's a lot less under there. I don't know. There's, um... you, know you know, so uh, that's, you know, so uh, uh, some places, you know, they just do, uh, the panels and they hang curtains around the backside. Uh-huh. You know, you know, so that is uh, uh, what I am uh, uh, looking at. So give me a, a uh, idea about you know about what you think. So I know you know this is the uh, the anniversary of the souls of black folks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I want to make sure that I send this that it's always showing on a lot 
of I wanted to be shown on um, uh, just after Neil. I wanted that to be shown on the Return to website. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so any uh, uh, anything else, how is that you can help me uh, uh, do so? To have this to have this recording on the Rotunda website. Yeah, and then I probably won't want to have it shown um, on the Voice House website. Okay. Well, I don't know about that, but um, I mean. I can talk to Gina, or you can talk to Gina. About no, no, no. Uh, 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 you can, but um, yeah. Uh, I just think that uh, what Doc Neil did is a uh, documentary. His his the the performance he just did. Yeah. So uh, he is the most acclaimed uh, international black pro in the world. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll look at it. But, uh, thanks a lot, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. no problem. Um, I'll get you the link to the recording um, even before Gina um, does any editing or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care.